Hello! <coughs> oh, straight away, clear throat. Wow. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome. It is Sunday. It is the Warhammer Sunday. We missed last week for various reasons, but I'm back. I'm back. And we're working on our Angry Marine, our Funko Pop Angry Marine. Yes, hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome, welcome to Warhammer Sunday. If you've not seen one of these before, uh, at the weekend, I work on my Warhammer Fun Time stuff. Uh, more often than not, I'm work well, normally, I'm working on my Warhammer Army, which is a Principality of Zeon themed uh, Warhammer Imperial Army, which is why the logo and the titles has the Zeon Eagle as well as the Imperial Eagle. Uh, not done that for a while because I have been catching up on the Warhammer Conquest, not painting stuff, just getting everything built and put out on shelves, so I'm not taking up so much space with lots of packages because they're piling up and I've not had a chance to work on them. But for the last few weeks, we've not even been doing that. I've been working on this fella that I got from uh, my local Warhammer store on their store birthday or the Warhammer day or whatever it was. I've forgotten now. We've been working on this chap, painting him up as an angry marine. Now, I've got two of these, and this one has been uh, a test pig, as it were. I wanted to try out dry brushing, and we'll talk about that in a minute. I want to try out the dry brushing technique on these, but we'll have a chat about that in a minute. But yes, welcome, welcome. Basically, it's three hours of me waffling away and doing maybe a bit of work, if I'm lucky. A little bit of work. Uh, not much work, to be honest. Uh, we'll just hang out, and you guys can chat with each other and with me in chat. We'll have a good time. We'll give away some stickers. I'll drink a gallon of coffee. I'll probably do some work, and we'll just have fun. We'll just have fun. Uh, as always, if you're watching this and you can't see the chat, the chat's here on the telly screen. Uh, but if you want to join in the actual live chat and do some typey typey and have a chance to win stickers, you need to make sure you're watching this on the YouTube page. Uh, so if you're not sure where that is, just click on the little YouTube icon that's probably down here in the bottom right hand corner of the video player somewhere. Click on that and it'll take you to the YouTube page where you can join in the live chat. If you're watching this on Facebook or Patreon or Ello or somewhere else that you're, that you're embedded, click on the YouTube icon and get yourself there. Now, if you are in the chat and you want to join in, if you want to catch my attention, ask me a question, have a chat, whatever, uh, just make sure to either put your comment in big fat capital letters. I've got my iPad here with the chat on it. Uh, but I might miss it, so make sure to put your comment in big fat capital letters. If you want to, you can do a super chat, which is the little dollar symbol at the bottom of the... That's not the one I'm clicking on there. I don't know why I'm clicking on that. Little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window. That puts your comment in a big colour box and makes a noise and puts an animation up here somewhere. So I can't possibly miss your comment. Uh, or if you want to... You can, if you've not got access to the chat at all, you can send me an email. It's fox at modelmakingguru.com. Uh, but I might not necessarily get that during the stream, but I'll try to I'll try to check emails as we go through the stream. Don't forget, of course, if you've not seen one of these before, we all are some... Oh, blah, 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 words, hang on. Coffee required, mouth failing. Oh, liter of coffee is on hand. Mouth is already failing. If you've not watched one of these before, we also have an ongoing stream boss battle. Uh, the current stream boss is not me. It says model making guru. Uh, but the current stream boss is actually um, Cy Reynolds, or Kevin as we know him, who is apparently on his way, but he's stuck in traffic. That's why he's late. So I think when he does turn up, we all need to kind of go, ah, because he's in trouble because he's late. So yeah, we need to take the mickey out of him for being late. I've already told him his name's going in the register in a, with the big red pen. He's been written down in the register with the bid, big red head, uh, pen. And I forgot, I thought Guthorm again, didn't I? Where's Guth? There he is. Can I get him on? Can I get him on so he, so he appears on camera? Where's? There he is. There he is. Somebody mentioned Guthorm was missing. Guthorm cannot be missing. Guthorm must be present for all, all streams. Um, yes, so what was talking Yes, yeah, so Kevin or Cy Reynolds is the current stream boss. His health has come. The black box is where you've taken his health down. Uh, basically, you need to get his health down to zero. Whoever gets his health to zero wins a pot of money between usually two to 500 quid um, that is then spent at a Games Workshop or Forge World or if you're in the EU or the UK, Goblin Games, the, channel, uh, pro the people that support the channel. Uh, you can win stuff, kits of your choice up to that value. Basically, if you want to get his health down, you can do a super chat, like the dollar symbol in the chat, or you can do a tip to the tip jar, which is streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru. <clears throat> or if you're not already subscribed to the channel, you can subscribe and that will take a tiny bit of the health off. Uh, but the more you put through as a tip or a, a super chat, the more health comes off. And if you get his health to zero, you win all the money that's been raised through the super chats and the tips. All that money goes to a big pot. And if you win, you get the pot. I tell you how much it is and you tell me what you want me to order for you from Games Workshop, Forge World, or if you're in the EU or UK, uh, Goblin Gaming. So there you go. So get your tips and super chats. Oh, he's just turned up. He's just turned up. Cy Reynolds, never fear. I have arrived. I will never die. Your name is still in the register in the big with the red pen. 
So, yes. Yes. So, yes, Kevin is our current stream boss. Uh, he's quite unbearable, so make sure you get rid of him as quickly as possible. <laughs> Only kidding. Only kidding. I've had a few people say Kevin is due to fall from his throne quite soon, but that's yet to happen. Um, there's currently quite a little tidy amount of money in the pot for you, um, but there's lots and lots of his health to go, so keep those super chats and tips coming through. Let's have a quick look at the chat before we crack on. Uh, who do we have? Uh, now, I didn't open up the chat uh, right from the start, so I know that Pascal was here like minutes before I even set the, the stream up earlier on today. So Pascal was first, as always. Uh, I start off with Pascal, though, uh, from earlier on. Uh, Lynn Dipple says, Bummer, I got to go to work. Hi, Pascal, have fun. Yes, Lynn was with us earlier on, but she's got to go to work. So hi, Lynn, if you're watching this, not live. Uh, thy creator is in, and Ghost Lyle says, Pineapple, 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 pineapple. Then more Draca says, coffee, 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 coffee. I agree with this. Eric Graham, good morning from Indiana. Uh, welcome, Eric, all the way from Indiana. Uh, Alex from Alexa Doof Studios in. Hey, Alex, how you doing, buddy? He says, hey, you. Uh, welcome, Alex. Uh, we have, uh, who else have we got in? Chris at Gross Models popped this in as well. One of your mods for today is Chris at Gross Models. Uh, don't forget his stream is later on today. Uh, you'll be seeing that later. Did we just have something happen then? I thought I heard a noise. Never mind. Uh, George, another one of your mods, George Gabriel, is in. Welcome, George. Uh, all my mods, all my the people that mod for me on my channel, they're all lovely, lovely people, so get to know them. Hang out with them. If you mess with them, they'll break you in half. But other than that, they're lovely, lovely. Uh, more Dracker is in. Evening all. Medic darn scalpel slides on cleanup. I think there's been stabity in the More Dracker 09 household. Just Django is in. Welcome, Django. Uh, Candy Graham for Mongo. Candy Graham for Mongo. Greetings all. Greetings, Candy Graham. Uh, we have Wayne Haywood, definitely Batman. Hi all, welcome Wayne. Uh, Stefan Last, hi all, been a while since I was last here. Yep, Stefan, you've not been able to be in uh, a lot recently, but welcome back. Welcome back to the fold. Uh, let's have a look. George Gabriel says, down with Kevin. <laughs> yes. Uh, Jamie Bone is in, welcome Jamie. Uh, Spiddy Q8 is in, hello, season one done, says Spid. Yes, uh, if you haven't watched it, if you're in the Boom Hut, I did put a link up in the Boom Hut or even if you're not on my page, uh, for the um, archive.org, have the entire first, second and third series of James Burke's Connection. It's a brilliant series. Season season one is really, really good. Season two is... Yeah. I've not seen season three yet. I've not seen it since I was a kid. But yeah, go on there. Go on, go and watch it. Uh, there's a link in the YouTube... Link in the YouTube. There's a link on my... I'll start again. There's a link in the Boom Hut. I put a post up and there's a link on my page as well. Interzone 88, hi Fox, hi all, welcome Interzone. Uh, we have, who else do we have? We have Aiden Jones, hello people trying to recover from the store anniversary near me. Oh yeah, did you spend the money? Was there, was there the spending of money, Aiden? Awesome. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Earl D is in, uh, uh, afternoon, says Earl D. Welcome Earl D. And Andy McLeish, hey folks, Andy, I've not seen you for a while, mate. Welcome, welcome. So, welcome to everybody. Uh, I'm sure there'll be more reviews as the time goes by. But like I say, if you uh, <clears throat> if you do want to get my... I need to clear my throat again. Hang on. <clears throat> if you do want to catch my attention, like I say, put your comments in big fat capital letters or even better, do a super chat. I can't miss a super chat. Big coffee. Uh, let's have a look. Big yellow spes marine says Andy. Yes, we are painting an angry marine. I'll show you what we're painting. The, I, said, I, got <clears throat> I got one of these a while ago. Uh, and while I was at my local store anniversary, I decided to grab another one because I've got one that I'm going to do a proper how to paint or, you know, proper painting video series at some point, at some point in the distant future. Uh, I'm going to take his head off because it's quite heavy. Um, I'm going to do a proper painting video series on that. But for this, I got this while I was in the store just to do for on a live stream. Uh, I'm going to do it as an angry marine. and I've been trying out dry brushing on these figures. I'll show you what we're going to, what we're working towards. If you don't know what an angry marine is, this is an angry marine. Uh... Angry Marines are basically a made-up fan fiction chapter of Space Marines, but they're always angry all the time and everything is swearing. So there are some rude words on the Angry Marines. Kind of like po uh, Pikachu colours, but you know, hey. But yeah, they are Angry Marines. So this is going to be painted up to look like an Angry Marine. I'll come back to you, come back to you. I'm back now. There we go. So we're going to paint it up. Yes, there will be rude words. And I've got to hand paint the, th the chapter symbol. Uh, by the way... Just so you know, um, this chat is 
uh, just so you know, this chat is uh, this. I'll start again. Wow, this stream is my stream. It's nothing to do with any of my channel supporters, technically. Um, so you can use rude words in the chat if you want to. I'm not going to read them out because family friendly, not family friendly, but monetization. Uh, but you're not you're not restricted. You can use rude words in chat if you want to. I don't mind. Now, just before we do get going, I'm just reminding myself. I'm um, just reminding you this channel is supported by GoblinGaming.co.uk. There is a link in the video below the description. Uh, if you need to buy any of your tabletop gaming stuff, it could be Games Workshop, it could be Warhammer, it could be, uh, what's it called, Conflict 47, it could be Malifaux, it could be Pokemon, it could be Yu-Gi-Oh, it could be Magic the Gathering. They do every kind of tabletop game you can think of. Uh, that's the place for you to go, is Goblin Gaming. There is a link in the description below the video. Uh, it's a special link that I've got that helps me make a little tiny bit of income for every order you place using that link. So if you need to order anything, it's 20% off Malifaux, Conflict 47, and at All Games Workshop stuff, 20% off recommended retail price. So use that link, get the 20% off those, and massive savings on everything else. And if you do, you're helping me because that link helps support my channel as well. It's a little bit of a, an income for me. So do use that affiliate link. It's in the description below the video. Now, one last thing as well, while I do remember, I've added an extra link underneath that in the description. Uh, just very quickly, if you have seen in the Boom Hut or on my page, very, very good friend of the Boom Hut, a very good friend of mine, uh, and a YouTuber we all probably know and love, Simon Curry from Gundam UK, has been very, very poorly, poorly sick, uh, and is recovering at the moment from uh, serious illness and a stroke uh, and, and brain surgery. So he is uh, currently uh, recovering. I'm trying to think the, how. What, the latest update I had was he's recovering at the moment. Uh, it's going to be a long road to recovery for him. And uh, if you know the boom, if you know me, you'll know he's a he's a he's a friend of mine. He's a fellow E Models video builder. He's he's been doing Gumpler and Gundam builds for years and years. Uh, he joins into Zacharelis's um, Gumpler Talk programs with Alex and some other guys. It's brilliant stuff. He's a really really lovely guy. Zach and Alex have set up a GoFundMe because he's going to be out of commission for. A very long time he's um, got no mobility on one side obviously he's had a major stroke he's, he's just getting to grips with speaking again it's only been early days so they have set up a GoFundMe to help raise funds for him to live off and support his, uh, his wife and two boys uh, while he's unable to do you know work or pretty much anything um, so if you get a second and you've not done already do have a look in the link in the description below the video underneath the Goblin Gaming one there's one for the GoFundMe if you'd like to help him out and I would I would ask please do he's one of us he's a fellow YouTuber for me he's a fellow YouTuber uh, he's one of us he's a boomer from the boom hut he's a lovely lad go and have a look and see if you can help him out the link is in the, below the video go and help him out help support him apparently they set a certain budget and it's already gone way past that everybody's like dropping money all over the place there I think he's going to be set for quite a while looking after his wife and two kids so go and help out while he can't support himself it's helping him out and you know it, it's a kind of really nice thing to do because we're a really small model making community and it's nice to know um, that if one of us falls the rest are all there to try and help pick them up or at least keep them ticking over until such time as they can stand up for themselves again so go on go on offer your support anyway let's crack on so yes we're going to paint this chap angry marine i kind of forgot all that bit before i got to showing you pictures of the angry marine so there you go Anyway, um, yes, uh, let's have a look and see. So we're going to be painting this Angry Marine. Now, it was a test. I decided to do this second one on the live stream, but I did it as a bit of a test because you know me. I've recently kind of got into the deep love of doing dry brush post shading rather than farting about with an airbrush. The thing I've learned when I've been painting Games Workshop and Warhammer stuff is I really hate airbrushing now and I love brush painting. It's brilliant. Um, so I've been sort of developing my own way of doing dry brushing post shading. I've got an eyelash on my tongue. Yeah, yeah, I've got an eyelash in my mouth. I can feel it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's just, uh, I've got rid of it now. Whoa, eyelash, no. Um, so I thought I'd test it on this. And I know you can't really, you won't really see it, but it's kind of ass. It doesn't, I'll, I'll zoom in. I'll see if I can show you how bad it is. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, where's me zoom? Where's me zoom? Where is it? I don't know if you will see at all because it's a it's a webcam picture, so it's a bit fluffy and soft anyway. But um, there's a massive texture to it. 
Now, when you're dry brushing, the thing is, the first, if you're dry brushing or dry brushing even multiple coats, if you do enough coats of dry brushing, like coat on coat on coat, um, like you will get a texture eventually because you're dry brushing a paint on, it's going to have a very slight texture. And every coat you dry brush on top is going to pick up that texture and amplify it because it's what dry brushing does. It picks up the edges and highlights them. And the more coats of dry brushing you add, the more obvious the texture is going to become. Uh, now, when I do my sort of post shading dry brushing technique, I can usually get three or four coats. Say I'm doing like a, a Lehman Russ or something or, a, you know, a vehicle or something like that. I can get three or four good coats of dry brushing. Uh, and the plan was that this was painted Avalanche Sunset. Then it would give a coat of Agrax shade. Then I dry brushed Avalanche Sunset over. Uh, the, the, the now darkened yellow coat just in the centers of panels but to leave the darkened areas in the recesses and then I went over with a dry brush of Uriel yellow uh, and then I did a very 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 small light dry brush of phalanx yellow which is a very light yellow color now if this was say a small vehicle that would be absolutely fine it would look nice and smooth you'd actually have a, almost not quite but almost an airbrushed shaded effect However, because this is so big, uh, you tend to use a bigger brush. And because I used a bigger brush, the, the texture has come out is even more extreme. So I would say, if you're doing one of these, because it's such a big flat surface area, either use a small brush, but it will take you forever and you'll die of boredom. Or when I do the next one, I'm just going to airbrush it. So while the little sort of dry brushing technique does work brilliantly for things like smaller models, vehicles, I'm going to be doing it on my Sazabi. Uh, the Sazabi I'm doing for George, that's going to have dry brushing on it. For something like this where it's big open areas, I don't recommend it because you probably can't see, but it's got this real kind of texture to it. It's almost like a sort of very fine leather texture. Now it's kind of interesting. It's not the end of the world. It looks, I'm happy with the shading. It's just got this texture to it. So... It's a little bit disappointing. So I know the next one I do, I'll do it as an airbrush. So I'm just going to drop the zoom down. There we go. Like I say, it's not, it's, not, it's not a criminally bad texture. It's just got a texture to it and it's not brilliant. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, but yes, so next one I'll do, I'll do airbrushing. So we've done the yellow armor. That was then given a glaze of Lamenta's yellow just to make all the yellow pop because by the time we did all that, it was a bit dull. The Lamenta's yellow glaze just made it go ping pop and it reduced the texture somewhat brought it all together uh let's have a look and see what the chat's doing uh spinny create says rude words uh Andy McLeish says Cy Reynolds much hundreds much skint yes uh Cy Reynolds says I made the mistake of writing a shopping list for Warhammer World then I did maths many hundreds yeah you don't you don't plan when you go into anywhere that sells warhammer you, you should know this as a hardcore professional so you you just go in and then what happens happens let the chips fall where they may and the cookies crumble and things uh ghost lyle says a slime arbo once said ah oh my neighbor's just to okay if you can hear that lawnmower and it's really loud and annoying, let me know and I'll close the window because my neighbours are all doing chopping trees down and lawnmower stuff again, as they always do on a weekend. Oh, suburbia, suburbia. Oh, middle class nonsense. <laughs> it drives me nuts. So if I have to, I'll close it. If you can't hear it, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Uh, Slime Arbo said, ah, I do have, I can't reach it. I do have a Slime Arbo that I need to actually make. I got one when they released it like last year or sometime. They popped it out for a little while, the resin figure. I've got one. I need to build that and paint it. Slime Arbo is still yelling, says JS. Yeah, he never stopped. Uh, Space Hamster ZH, hey all, welcome Space Hamster. Uh, George Gabriel says, makes it fuzzy. Dry brushing is not a crime, says Annie McLeish. No, it's not at all. And like I say, I've been working on that kind of post shading effect. And in some of my vehicles, I, without, I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but I'm really happy with the way it came out. I think it came out great. It's not as soft and delicate as airbrushing if you're careful with it. If you use nice soft brushes and use circular motions, but you can get almost airbrushed level shading, almost. So if you haven't got an airbrush, it's a, it doesn't mean you can't do sort of shaded panels and things. You can do it. It's just a bit more fiddly. Uh, try a glaze of yellow, dude. It will likely help. It's had a glaze of Lamenta's yellow. It did have that last week. Don't worry. I thought the same way. Sam Reynolds says, um, oh, George asks Kevin. How many hundreds would it have cost? Because he made the list to go to Warhammer World. He says, if I buy the entire list, George, about £900. He says, I do want another Forge Will Fellblade and some Custodes stuffs. Oh, Fellblade, that'd be nice. 
Uh, a coat or two of Lamentas Yellow will blend those. I might do another coat of Lamentas Yellow though, actually. I might do that first before we get going, just to make it pop even more. Because if you remember the, the uh, Angry Marine, it is a very bright yellow colour. So, the Lamentas Yellow, it's, it's, it's a glaze, so it's just basically transparent paint. It makes all the colours pop and it makes them brighter. I might give it one quick coat of that. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, they're talking about what uh, Kevin wants to buy at Warhammer World. Uh, thy creator says, so recently I bought made to order pieces and I think they are metal. Anyone know which glue to use to stick it together or it could be resin? Uh, yes, and as Simon says, super glue or CA glue, cyanoacrylate glue. If it's metal, uh, then really you want CA glue, super glue, because it's kind of the easiest thing to work with. It, try and get yourself some thin super glue. Thin dries really quick, but it's it's thinner and it'll flow a bit better. Uh, and use a cocktail stick. If it's resin, um, you can use super glue, or you can, it's, if it's a, a load bearing heavy structure, you might be better with some kind of epoxy based glue. Um, super glue is fine. The downside of super glue is it, it 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 grips like anything and it gives a nice firm bond, but it doesn't it can't survive shock or um, stress. If you knock something made of super glue, it'll just fall apart because the glue can break and shatter. So if it's if it's metal, super glue's your way. If it's resin, super glue or epoxy. If you're using super glue on resin though, and it say this was resin and you were gluing that on and you had to glue all these on and it's all heavy chunks of resin, what you might want to do is use like some little metal pins and pin joints. If you've got two pieces, you drill a hole in each one, you put a piece of metal between them, it can be a paper clip or a little piece of whatever, put it in and then you put them together and you've got that piece of metal holding them together. If for example, let's say I was gluing on that arm and this was like a really big model that weighed a ton what i might do is put a piece of metal that moved that was like at an angle like that just drill a hole down there and through the arm i'd actually drill the hole through here drill it through zzz, like that put the arm on super glue it all together put the metal in well put the metal in super glue it all together you kind of you know what i mean drill the hole uh, get the metal in, super glue it all, put the arm on, and then when you finish, you fill the hole in at this end, and you've got two things super glued together with a piece of like metal. It can be a paper clip or whatever, just giving it some extra firm grip, so it's not just going to fall off. Because even if the super glue gave in, the metal would still hold it in place. So you might want to do some pinning if you're using super glue if it's resin, big heavy resin. But little things, little bits of resin you sticking on like a model, like little greebles and things. Doesn't matter, just resin or super glue is uh, uh, super glue is fine. Da, 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 da. George says, I would like to see said list. <laughs> uh, great minds think alike then, said, says Kevin Reynolds. Uh, says Kevin Reynolds, says Si. Uh, yes, I, I, well, I wasn't going to give it a second coat, but now you mentioned it, I might give it a second coat. Uh, Fox, is it worth a shot of yellow ink to bring the yellow up? It might be, but I haven't got any. That's why I'm going to use Lamentas yellow. Uh, the only inks I've got are black and brown. And I th no, I've, got br I've got black ink and that's it. I haven't got yellow ink. Uh, you could do, but I'm just going to use a glaze instead because it saves me making a glaze out of the ink. Uh, how do I tell which is it, says thy creator? Well, metal is metal uh, and resin is um, usually white or grey. If you get a resin part, it will probably look something like that. That's plastic, obviously. It would look like grey or uh, white and it will be solid. It'd be a block. Uh, and normally when you get resin kit parts, they come on... I mean, if it's not metal, it's probably, and it's something like that, it's probably resin. Normally they were, I've got anything to draw on, but normally you have the piece itself and you have another block underneath with a little tube sticking out and you can see it's it's like attached to something. Also, resin parts often have a lot of flash around the moulding, so you, you'll be able to tell. If it's, if it's kind of slightly shiny and white or grey, it's probably resin. And Paul at Team Inep says, I'm going to sound a bit rude, but if it's metal, you'll know it's metal. <laughs> it's kind of shiny and metallic. <laughs> um, let's have a look. And then Kevin uh, puts a link in for thy creator as well. The thing is, I suppose it's not, it's not a silly question at all, you know, how do I tell the difference? Because if you never work with resin, you don't know what resin looks like. You've got no idea. Um, if you're not familiar, I mean, you know what metal looks like, but if you don't know what resin looks like, you won't necessarily know. So, yeah, you'll know because resin is quite heavy and it's it's... It, it kind of and this is plastic obviously uh, resin's usually um uh, gray or white that creator says yep never touch resin yeah uh, the one thing i say depending if it's little tiny greebles one thing to keep in mind with resin 
Um, and there's lots of guides online before you go ahead and do it in anger. But uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you're going to do any sort of massive amount of sanding to resin, um, please, 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 either wet sand or, if you can't wet sand, wear a mask. Not a, not a respirator, but a dust mask. Um, we all get away with sanding plastic and it's not great for you, but it doesn't really, you know, you're not going to be, you're going to be all right. If you sand resin, resin is a highly carcinogenic if you inhale it and b it's like lunar regolith it, it it resin powder is like little tiny sharp shards little tiny needles it's like volcanic ash or lunar regolith it's like little tiny needles and if that gets in your lungs it's not broken down it doesn't get dissolved it's just it's there in your lungs and it'll really do you some damage so just make sure if it's resin you're wearing a dust mask you don't need a full respirator because it's not a gas it's just dust but just wear a dust mask or wet sand keep the dust down uh, Beyond Hope says, Thy creator, can you say who made the parts? That may also give us a clue to what they are, what material they are. Yeah, just say in the chat, dude. Say what you've ordered, what they are, and somebody will probably know what they are. Right, so, today's plan. Uh, well, I'm going to start with some red, but first we'll start with some more Lamentous Yellow. It's a good idea, that, Simon. Good idea. I need to get a device of uh, something. I need to get a stick of skewerage. I need to find a stick. Hang on. Searching, searching now. Searching now, sir. Big stick of something. Too small. Da -da 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 -da. Bigger stick of something. Still too small. Oh, God damn it. Uh, I must have a big fat stick that I can jam in his neck hole. Oh, I have, but it's got a brush on the end of it. Oh, still too small. Gosh darn it. We're going to have to go massive styly. Go for my Simply Brushes number 10 brush. There we go. Oh no. Ah, oh, this is, this is, my neck is too thin. Ha ha ha. I'll stop now. So we're going to give this a blast of Lamenta's Yellow. Uh, now, Lamenta's Yellow is a glaze. And what a glaze is. This, sadly, because they brought the contrast paints in, this no longer exists. But I love this stuff. I've only got half a pot left. It's brilliant. I love it. It's a really fantastic yellow glaze. Glaze is basically a very, very thin, transparent color. Uh, and it is, imagine like a glaze that you put. It, 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 it's called a glaze because it's like the old days of when you make, say, ceramics. And you put a glaze over the ceramic to change the color or to color things in. And you fire it in a kiln. It's the same thing. It's a very thin, transparent layer of color. If I wanted to make... Uh, something that was white into yellow, it would probably take dozens and dozens and dozens, if not tens and tens, and probably take like 30 or 40 coats of this before it was even semi-transparent, whereas a paint is quite opaque. The reason you can use a glaze is, unlike a shade, it doesn't settle into recesses, it just covers everything more or less equally. So it's a good way to tint something. So if I paint something, if this was, say, white, and I painted it with this yellow glaze, it would just take on a yellow tint. If you can see there, the little um, plastic bit that the paint sits on, you don't normally see this because it's not transparent, but this is a transparent part and you can see through it. It's like taking a piece of glass on your, it's like sunglasses, they're just normal glasses with a tint on them. This is just the tint basically. So what we'll do, we'll get ourselves uh, a nice brush, not a massive brush, we'll get a nice brush. Doesn't need to be small and we don't need to be careful here. And we're just gonna put a glaze on. So I'll get myself a nice big brush and you can be fairly careless because they are so thin that you can just put them on and it'll look, it'll just make it all pop. Now the, the beauty of these is, I don't know how they make these, but these aren't just regular pigments. They are kind of more bold and bright. You could make your own glaze yourself. You can just get a normal paint uh, and you can just add lots and lots of, depending on what you want to do, you can just make a glaze with just paint, and, acrylic paint and water if you want to. Uh, however, there's a risk then it will do things like um, go into recesses and it might, it might end up more like a shade. It might get watermarks. The best way to make a glaze is just to, if you're making your own, is just to get the tiniest amount of paint and mix that in with some glaze medium, which is basically just paint 
without pigment. Now, glaze medium has got different names. If it's the Vallejo stuff, it's actually just called Vallejo glaze medium. And although, don't get glaze confused with gloss. Glaze isn't shiny. It just means you're glazing a colour on it. And it's nothing to do with how shiny it is. So that's the head done. I'll put him somewhere. I've got to try and stand him up somehow. Um, so you can get yourself a glaze medium of some sort. And that can be, like I say, it could be Vallejo glaze medium. You can use... And, oh, I need to stand him on something now. Oh... Is he going to stay there? Is he going to stay there? He might. He might not. He'll, he'll just have to hang. There you go. He'll live. He'll hang off the edge there. there you go. Uh, yes. So you get yourself a... Hang on. I'm having technical difficulties. See, I can't stand him up because there's a brush on the end of that. Oh. Uh, oh, hang on. Hang on. I'll figure this out. He'll probably fall off. There we go. Right, he's on something now. I'm trying to talk to the people. You need to not be not be not be falling off for a start. No, no, yes, no. There, right. I can't move the table at all. It'll fall off. It'll probably fall off any moment now. So yes, you can make your own glaze. Uh, like I say, uh, you glaze medium, which is just paint without the pigment, and then to that you would add the tiniest amount of paint. I mean, a real tiny amount, the tiniest of touches of paint acrylic paint and that basically makes a glaze medium but the reason that would be better than just using water is because a glaze medium is designed to act like paint because it is just paint so it will flow and have surface tension like the paint and ideally what you do is depending on which paints you use you want to try and use the same I mean, for the best results try and stick to a glaze medium for the paints you're using so if you're using citadel paints for example uh, you could use Lamian medium, which is effectively just a, a glaze medium. You don't have to, but it will behave the way the same way as all the other Citadel paints, because it's basically a Citadel paint or a shade without any any pigment, any text, any colour. Uh, if you're using Vallejo paints, you can use the Vallejo glaze medium. There are other ones available. There's also artists' glazes, just general artist glazes, uh, glaze mediums. There's plenty out there. You'll have a good uh, have a good look around. There's loads out there. But it's just better than using water because it doesn't do, it has a different surface tension, it behaves more like paint and it won't do like, you know, the the coffee ring type watermark staining that you might get if you use water. There we go, look at that. Simon, that was a great idea, buddy. If you hadn't said that, I wouldn't have convinced myself to do it. I was thinking about it, but I hadn't decided on it. And then when you said do a second cut, I'm like, yeah, second cut. So it looks a bit brighter now. It doesn't come out quite on camera. Uh, right, put that there. But glazing, glazing, gla glazing can be fun. It's quite tricky if you're doing, if you're just putting a glaze on like that, it will, it'll do one thing, it'll, it'll tint the colour, so this makes it more bright yellow, because it's a very bright yellow colour. The other thing it can do is it can blend uh, separate things together. So for example, if you paint something red, and then you, say you paint something with Mephiston red, and then you do a uh, an edge highlight or some highlighting of say squig orange which is a lot of a different color to this it'll look really stark uh, or if you do uh, something black oh, well not black let's say a dark gray with a very light gray highlight it'll look quite stark the difference of the contrast might be a bit excessive so what the glaze can do is kind of bind different separate colors together just to make them a little less contrasty so if you've got two colors working together but they're so different in contrast like a really light blue and i say an ultramarine blue or something like that a, a, a blue glaze that's between the two of them will just unify them and make them all kind of work together it's a really nice idea you can also use glazes for wet blending and for, for wet blending for color blending if you want to fade from one to the other you can use glazes because if the more coats of a glaze you apply the, the, the more opaque the paint gets so like I said before, if I've got a white object, if I glaze that with yellow, it would look a little tiny bit yellow. Do a second coat, it would look more yellow. A third coat, more yellow and more and more and more. But if I made each coat smaller and smaller in a smaller, smaller area, you'd have a blend between the white and the yellow. So that's you can use glazes for that. It, I, I, I say go and have a look and have a look online. and find it, It's tricky to do and I've not mastered that part of it yet. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. Kevin Reynolds, Sir Reynolds says what his list was. Mordraka says resin dust equal asbestos warning. Yeah, it's it's carcinogenic. It's horrible, horrible, horrible. Don't breathe in 
uh, resin dust. If you are working in a room with resin where you're sanding excessively and there are other people in the house, if you can do it outside, if not, use wet sanding techniques so that the dust, you know, work on a something where the, the paper, the sandpaper, the model's wet, the sandpaper's wet, and the, the, the dust just goes in the water and stays in a container of some sort. Uh, if you can't, then just make sure you wear a mask and do it away from everybody else. Uh, yeah, so uh, Kevin Reynolds says, George, he says, a fell blade, Forge World, two Custodes Galactus Dreadnoughts, Forge World, the Custodes Achilles Dreadnought, Forge World, a myriad of the Games Workshop Custodes kits, and Mortarian to replace him in the stash. Yeah, that's about 900 quid worth of stuff. Holy cow. Oh, he says, I get Magnus the Red and some Thousand Sun stuffs. Yeah. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, uh, there, Chris. It's a Warhammer Chaos Space Marine Sorcerer with Plasma Pistol. It's made by Games Workshop. Uh, Simon says that never model was never cast in fine cast, if I remember correctly, so it would most likely be white and metal. Yeah, uh, the old for the old Games Workshop stuff was metal. Although they did Games Work, although you got Forge World, which is resin. Everything Forge World is pretty much resin or resin stuff to go on a plastic kit. There's also fine cast, which was not Forge World. It was Games Workshop trying to do resin. But whereas Forge World stuff can be pretty good, fine cast stuff is basically kind of ass. So, yeah, uh, like Simon says, I think it's going to be metal, that one. White metal. Right, cup of coffee. Just Django asks, just curious, but is carbon fibre when sanded the same as resin? Asking because in my mini four-wheel drive, we use certain parts that are made of carbon fibre. Um, don't know. I wouldn't imagine so. Uh, but I, poss uh, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Oh, and a Spartan Assault Tank from Forge World, says Kevin. Yes. Oh, uh, Beyond Hope says, no sites on the Games Workshop store, and it says resin. Okay, it must be resin then. That's not the sorcery order, says Sai. I'll leave you two to that comment. I don't want to confuse it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Earl D says, I forgot to ask, how long is left on the Sazabi build? My pal was thinking of doing the HG or an SD. Um, George, I will let you answer that one. If you don't know, if you're a member of the Boom Hut, uh, we do have a group Sazabi build ongoing at the moment because uh, I'm building one for George. Um, he, George said like, we'll do a group build. Everybody else is building one. The due date, the, the completion date for the group build was kind of in the next few weeks, but nobody's finished it. I mean, I'm yeah, I've I've not finished. I'm I'm not anywhere near finished. But I'm not taking part in the group build. There is a prize. Uh, George will pick a winner once they're all done. But uh, yes, I'll let George, because George is doing the, the group build. So I'll let George answer that if we're extending it or not. Because nobody's, nobody's, there's a few people that have finished on time. But the rest, because we've had about four months where the rest of us have just got so sidetracked doing other things. None of us are anywhere near completing yet. Most of us. Uh, do, 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 do. Just keep holding him. Not like you're going to do any more painting today, says Chris at Gross Models. Why I order? Uh, more Draca says so it looks like dad's not here is anybody going to ask Fox's question I shall find out in a moment I said to I'll drop their glazes I got some Vallejo glaze medium and their link inks to make some of my own yep that's the other thing if you're going to make your own glaze it's better to use inks rather than paints because inks are super super like um, intense pigments they're not it's like a, if you take black ink and black paint black paint looks all right black ink is like as black as night it's just intense uh to add to what fox is saying water increases the amount of space chemically between pigments reducing its surface tension whereas medium it retains the properties of the paint maintaining space yeah that's why uh, whenever you want to do uh, if you want to you know dilute a shade down say something simple as you've got a shade but you don't want it to be quite as intense you, you use a, a, a medium like lamian medium which is somewhere instead of water because if you add water you're thinning the paint you're thinning it you're you're changing the the chemical properties of it like he says you're changing the space between the pigments you're changing the acrylic binders it will react differently and you'll get a different flow properties it 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 may get coffee staining you may get watermarks <clears throat> it may not <clears throat> it may not uh cling to flat surfaces as good as as well as it used to if you add a medium to it you're not thinning it, you're diluting it. You're just increasing them because this is this is basically Lamian medium with some pigment in it. And that's without pigment in it. You're just increasing the amount of this. If you add some of that to that, you're increasing the amount of that in there, but you're not increasing the amount of pigment. 
So you're, make, you're, you're changing the ratio between the pigment and the non-pigment. So you're diluting it. You've got the same amount of pigment. It will behave exactly the same way. You're just making the, you're basically making it more transparent. So water or thinners will thin a paint and change it chemically. A, a medium of some sort will just make it more transparent. Think of it that way. It'll, diluting is making something transparent. Thinning is changing how it behaves. And that's why, I mean, you, you can mix and match. You could use Vallejo um, mediums with this. You could use Winsor & Newton Galerium uh, medium. Anything, any kind of artist acrylic medium will probably be absolutely fine. They'll behave a bit differently. For best results, use the same one from the same manufacturer, but you don't have to. There are times you can. I do a thin paints with water, for example. Uh, when I do this, when I'm working on George's Cesarbi, I will be using um, doing a chipping technique using a glaze made from water and paint. So there you go. Paul, sir, Paul at Team Inep says, ice cream fan. Oh, dad's in. Somebody mentions dad's and he appeared. He says, lol, what's on your bench and what's in your belly, folks? That is the question. What's on your bench and what's in your belly? I'm going to quickly hair dry the head a little bit just to give him a bit of a blast because I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs. So I'll give you a second to answer. Give me one moment. Shall so take but a moment, folks. Hopefully. What's on your bench and what's in your belly? So what are you working on at the moment? And what have you either had for your dinner or are you planning for your dinner? There's always one bit that won't dry. Oh. Dry, Daniel, dry! There we go. I think it's dry enough. I'll, I'll hang him up again just for a little bit longer, but I think he's dry enough for now. I've got to say, by the way, I'm quite disappointed. I do like the look of these bits here. These little ribbed tubes on the helmet. However, when you actually make a Primaris Marine, these bits, you paint them silver because they're like metallic tubes, but they've molded them like rubber tubes. So I can only paint these like rubber colours, which... I, I, let me just double check the Angry Marine. Does he have... Okay, he kind of has grey tubes anyway, so I'll get away with that. Yeah, it's not so bad, but it's still it's annoying. It's annoying a little bit because you tend to paint them like silver colours, don't you? Right, so that's up there again. Balancing delicately. Uh, this is coming along nicely. Uh, yeah, what's on your bench and what's in your belly? Let's have a look. Print Guru is in. Happy weekend all. Made it home in time. Hey, welcome Print Guru. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Mm. George says, I think I have. we have to extend it. This is the Sazabi group build. I think we have to extend it. Uh, I haven't even had my pre-order ship. Yes, I'll, I'll show you something. Uh, here's all the red armor. Here's some. Oh, sorry, here's all the yellow armor for my Sazabi. Yeah, it's not not painted yet. <laughs> That's just the yellow armor. So yeah, I'm I'm not going to be finishing by the deadline. Let's just be honest here. Uh... Uh, LD says, George, my real grade new... Sh um, so I'll start that again. George says, uh, LD says, George, my real grade new Gundam ship last week from Japan Plaza. I got the last one. They tend to restock more often than Banzai and Hobby Link Japan. Uh, more Draca says, bench cleaning fluids. Okay, I won't ask. Ben uh, belly, coffee, party pies and sausage rolls. As somebody had a birthday. As somebody had a birthday. We need to know whose birthday it was. Party pies. Oh, I really want party pies now. Uh, on bench, I've got this. Uh, in my belly is a apple. Because I'm trying to slim down a little bit. So what I'm tending to do is like just have my dinner in the evening. But for lunch, I get the munchies halfway through the day. And it's like, oh, it's really hard to resist. So I've discovered if I just have a apple, slice it up into slices. And I can, I can eat it in small. And it just, my brain gets kind of almost like kidded into thinking it's eating a big meal because I can just do lots of chewing and crunching and it, it, my brain gets happy with that. So there you go. Uh, Eric Graham says, I have a HO 60 foot high cube box car on the paint bench. I think he means an HO scale 60 foot box car, not an actual 60 foot box car. Uh, that's a kind of train um, thing. Uh, what's the word not what's the word for the bits that go on the back of the uh stock there we go rolling stock 
On the paint bench, I have 10 Space Marines Tactical Squad to build on the paint on workbench and egg and green pepper scramble in the belly. Ooh, that sounds good. Egg. <laughs> Fart fuel. Eon's car is in. Hello, everyone. What have I missed? And bench primary Space Marine Captain and belly chocolate later for mincemeat and wraps. Yes, I like that. Uh, Beyond Hope says, several sprues from the Warhammer Conquest series, 40 to 49 on the bench, and belly pork hazlet sandwiches and fruitcake. What's pork hazlet? Sounds good. I assume it's not pork hazlet and fruitcake in the same thing. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. A little update on the Warhammer Conquest. Like I said at the start, it's, uh, because I've been doing like the, the Cesarbi and I've got the Falcon to come, it's going to be a while before I get back to that. Um, but uh, meanwhile, I've got the packages piling up. So once this is done, we're going to go back to working on the Warhammer Conquest stuff. Because what I'm trying to do is just get everything built, either in sub-assemblies or completely built if I can. And then I can put it in a display cabinet or I can put it in my you know, transport cases just out of the way. So right now in the front bedroom, there's a stack of like packages and envelopes and boxes because it's all just piling up and I haven't got the space. So yes. Uh, Aiden Jones said something, but then retracted it. Oh, uh, Earl D says H uh, high grade new and crisps. We need to know what flavor crisps. You can't just say crisp. You know how this works. Uh, Aiden Jones says belly after rights after rights. Do, oh, do you mean after eight? Wow, do they still make after eights? Is it Christmas? After eights is a Christmas food. Awesome. Bench Saurus Sunblood. I like it. Wayne Haywood. Uh, bench Legion Scout Trooper. Belly Chicken Roast Later. Nice one. Uh, oh, he says yes. Just uh, Aiden Jones will say after eights. Wow, I've not I've not had an after eight since I was a kid. That's a Christmas thing. So awesome. Uh, da -ba -da -ba -do. More Dracus says, anything's left in the freezer needed to clean the bench down. Okay, <laughs> I've got you. Uh, let's have a look. Tim Wilkinson, welcome Tim, says, belly, bacon and egg bombs. Yes, bench, Bandai Stormtrooper and Boba Fett, the Mandalorian kit bash. I like that. Uh, George Gabriel says, on my bench is a Phobos librarian for a painting contest. In my belly is a fruit smoothie. Ooh. Uh, yes, George is... Uh, George is um, been hit hard by the painting miniatures bug haven't you george um george only till recently hadn't I mean, well he had but he, he just kind of he's suddenly fallen headlong into the painting miniatures thing and he's in just a matter of a few weeks he's he's basically get good as it were he's, he's doing glazes and blends and i'm like wow this is awesome he's doing some really good work he does post up in the boom button with little updates so do have a look he likes he was doing some i have to say george those sort of purpley colors he's very 1980s i did like that kind of 1980s color scheme it's kind of awesome uh, oh, there goes my hair dryer. Hang on. There you go, stay there. Uh, who else have we got bench and belly? Richard Gibbs says pizza for the third day. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. And Congress, but you have to say what pizza. You can't just say pizza. You have to clarify it. We need to know all the toppings. We need to know all of it. We can't have half the information. I've got a runny nose. Uh, Team Annette Paul says slow roast lamb roast dinner and an HO scale building. Ooh, roast lamb. I could go for some of that. Uh, Cy Reynolds' says, bench is the arms of the Cesarbi Vercar. Belly is a smoothie. Yes. So everybody's doing this Cesarbi. Uh, cheese and onion says LD. There we go. The, the correct flavour of crisps, which I have to say is the right flavour of crisps. Mince pies are in my local shop already, says Wayne Hayward. Good God. George Gabriel says, I want a golden demon. Oh, yes, he's cause he's learning. He's, he's, he's sort of doing all this painting and stuff. He's, he's monstering it completely. He's burning it. And, and he also is going to be entering like 15 different things for the golden demon competition, which is awesome. So I say, go, George. Go, girl. You go, girl. I can't wait to see. But yeah, he's been posting some pictures and it's like, wow. Uh, what are after eights, says JS Idaho. They're like little wafer thin chocolate. Imagine uh, it's like a little wafer thin square of chocolate with a minty filling. And it's like literally about that thick. And you get them in a box like that long. And they're just a little tiny sleeve. You remember, do you remember like old floppy disks that used to come in paper sleeves? It's like that. It's a, it's a little sleeve with a little square chocolate thing in. Like mint thins, I suppose. I don't know what they are. Really. I'm just making that up. But little chocolate square with mint inside. And the, the but in here in the UK, they're kind of a Christmas thing. The kind of uh, people in the 1970s, people in the after eight at Christmas. So, uh, doo -doo -doo. 
Lewis Williamson says belly Sunday roast with beef and turkey. Bench not Warhammer. Never done it yet. So it's a one three fifty enterprise. Don't worry, Lewis. There will there will come a time. You you'll have your moment where you accidentally start working on some kind of Warhammer. It will happen. But nothing wrong if you don't. Um, Cy Reynolds says my tutelage and George's natural skill is winning. Yeah, Simon is uh, sort of is uh, working with George to get his painting skills up. I need to get Simon to work with my and get my painting skills up. Uh, we'll get you a demon dude if you win the Slayer Sword before me. I'll cry. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if Simon sort of uh, tutors George into doing painting and then suddenly George is winning all the uh, Slayer Swords and Simon isn't. They'd be like, no. Uh, you can get after eights all year round here in Switzerland. I'll be damned if I only eat them around Christmas. They're awesome. You can get them all year round here, but nobody really eats them apart from Christmas. Anyway, right, so I think this is dried. Now I'll give it a quick zizz with the hairdryer for a very quick moment. Hairdryer across the universe. That bit's still shiny, so it's not dry yet. Damn it. Damn it. Dry. Dry. Dry, damn you. There we go. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> uh, Lewis Williamson says that he was, said he was making the 1350 Enterprise. So more Draco is like, oh, which Enterprise? Thinking Star Trek. And he's like, no, it's the Tamir USS Enterprise aircraft carrier. Which I have to say, if you're making that thing, that is a beast. When I was a little kid, I used to look longingly through the Tamir catalogue back in the 80s. And that kit was always my, my God. I, I couldn't comprehend that such a kit existed because it's huge. Yeah, Mordraka says, oh, have fun with that kit. It's massive. If you're in, uh, if you're not in the boom hut already, uh, Lewis Williamson, I'll post link up. If you are, I do apologise. I do um, lose track of who's in what where. I'll post a link up for you in the chat. There you go. But if you're not in the boom hut already, do feel free to go along and join and post up pictures of how you get on with that build. Because it is a, it's a legendary kit, that. It is a legendary model. Nearly finished, only taken a year, just got decals to do, says Lewis. Oh, in that case, we, yeah, we really want pictures. Right, so we've done the glaze. So next up, it is time for us to do uh, the red, I think. I've got to paint the undersuit. But we'll get the red done first. Now, what I need to do is just move Guthorn for a second. Just while I get a picture. Because I have a picture, I think I have a picture here on my iPaddings. There we do. Uh, so I've got reference of what I'm actually painting red. Put Guthorn back where he belongs. There you go, Guthorn. Uh, now what I need to do is what's going to be red. So we have the pauldrons are going to be red. Uh, we have the bits, the ears, if you want to call them that, are going to be red. We have the cuffs on the sleeves are going to be red. Uh, the elbows are red. And the little circular joints on the bottom of the leg they're going to be red so not a massive oh the, the casing for the gun so i think what we'll do first is we'll actually get the gun i'll show you i don't know i'm doing all that i'm not actually showing you the picture uh we'll get the gun done first. well i'm going to get some lead belcher on the gun first now this image does show the gun as, uh, as black but i might do this grip as black or a dark color but i'm actually going to do the the metallic parts as, as the standard sort of lead belchery type colors just because if it's all just black, it just looks a bit boring. So I'm going to probably have to do that first. So let me take that picture off for you. I will bring the chat back so I can see you guys. Ba -ba -bum. The keyboard wakes up. Wake up, keyboard. There we go. Magic. Didn't even touch my iPad. <coughs> so let's get it on. Um... Red, red, woohoo, says Dad. Paul Di Tommaso is in. Hello, people. How are things today? Hey, Paul. Welcome, welcome. Uh, right, so. We'll get the metallic part of the gun first, done first. And what I'll do at the same time is we've also got these thrust, these sort of vents and thrusters on the backpack. I never know if these are... I assume these are jetpack thrusters and they're just vents, but I don't know, because it's a power pack. The backpack is a power pack, so... 
We'll get that done first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this bit in the middle because I always, I know you're not supposed to. I'm going to paint this bit as well. It's not supposed to be silver, but I like painting it silver. I don't know why. I just do. It just, it just works for me. So we'll get that done first. Let's get the wet palette ready. Uh, Lewis has just been added to the hut. Welcome. Welcome, Lewis. You're now a member of the Model Makers Beam Hut. Uh, the best, in my opinion, and that's just not just because I, I, I made it. Not just because it's my group. In my opinion, the best online model making Facebook community. There's very, lots of qualifications there. The best Facebook model making community there is. Because, why? Because uh, we do not allow brushes to fall out of plastic tubes. God damn it. Uh, we take great pride in, as best we can, one of the tubes has come off me. Oh no, it's not. As best we can, uh, stamping out snark bitchiness uh, and just ass hattery basically anyone being an ass hat they don't last long in the boom hut uh, I think that might be enough for now uh, we look after our members we try and protect them from that if you all you know I'm the I'm it's my group and all my mods and me we've all learned over the years we've been members of many many groups no no groups will be named Nobody, nobody be naming things in the chat, please. Don't be naming anything. I'll just move your comment. But uh, we all know of, you know, various groups and things that we've all been in. And they've not been brilliant. There's been snark and bitching and nasty attitudes and all kinds of negativity and bad stuff going on in many places online. And I got sick of it. It was pathetic. So I just sat on my own group and said, right, this is safe zone for models. Uh, now, what we say is, obviously... It doesn't mean that every time you paint, post something up, everybody's going to say, that's brilliant, that's brilliant, brilliant, you're all awesome, excellent, excellent. Criticism is allowed. But we tell people to be constructively criticismed. You know, you don't say, you're that's rubbish, you're rubbish. You say, that's really good, I can see what you've done. Have you thought about maybe doing this, that and the other? It's just a very safe environment. It's a bit dumb, a bit silly. There's no seriousness. You don't do any rivet. There's nobody allowed, not allowed... I'll get my words out. We don't allow rivet counting or anything like that. So go on, knock yourself out, have fun. You'd be surprised how many groups and places are just like, they're just a toxic wasteland, a lot of them. Horrible places. I've been in so many groups where it's just, I've had to leave because it's just horribly toxic. We don't allow that. We don't allow that at all. I'm going to take that off there so it's not making loads of noise every time I rinse a brush. So uh, on the helmet we have, I'm not going to, I'm going to, uh, I've got to paint these little tiny bits here. Uh, there's one, there's a little tiny bit on the end of the tube, tube. Uh, and I might paint these, they'll be metallic, I've decided, decided with my brain. So let me get and brush, we'll do the head first because that's easiest for me to handle. Do 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 do. Uh, anyone just want a deep fried Mars bar right now? Well, I do now. God damn it. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, Cy, and, Cy Reynolds and George Gabriel are figuring out painting camp, even though they live in different countries. It's, I love it when a plan comes together. So I've got a little bit of lead belcher to start with on my wet palette. Uh, I don't need to add a lot of water to this. It's, I've just recently topped up the wet palette and replaced all the bits. So it should, that brush is far too small. I need to put my visor on so I can see what I'm doing. Move the palette out of the way. I don't know where to put the palette. It's all, everything's in the way now. A bit more water perhaps. I can start off with a small brush while I'm just doing this little tiny detail. Can you see that? You can see that. Now keep in mind while I'm doing this, I can't see the chat, so. If you desperately need to get my attention, you need to do a super chat. Because it makes a noise. Otherwise, I ain't going to see you. Ba -ba -boom, ba -ba -boom. Just these little bits here. They're probably not meant to be this colour, but I'm just kind of making this up. Warhammer is freedom. No, that's Gumpler. Right, that's the wrong thing, isn't it? Never mind. Near enough. 
Besides, Angry Marines is a fan is a is a fan fiction chapter, so there's a little bit of leeway allowed. I don't know who did the drawing that I'm using as the basis for my paint job, but who knows if it's even accurate? I don't know. <laughs> Just a reminder, by the way, uh, if you're not already aware, if you are a patron or a supporter on Patreon. Uh, the latest episode of the Sazabi build, the one I'm building for George, that is actually up on Patreon now. It came right up last week. Uh, it is a Patreon exclusive build. So the full sort of painting episodes are only available to patrons. So if you haven't watched it already, because last time I checked there's like about four views or something. If you haven't watched it already, do go and check it out. It's if you're a ten dollar plus patron, it's on there. It's exclusively for you guys. No one else is watching it. It's only for you guys. So do go and check it out. Make sure you watch. Uh, I've got to start on doing the red armor tomorrow. Painting all the red armor stuff. The frame is the, the inner frame is pretty much not fully painted, but all the base paint colors have been done. I did a little bit of dusty spraying on it and then realised, hang on, I've still got stuff to paint on here, but never mind. So that's pretty much done. Um, so I'm going to start that tomorrow. So then hopefully there should be another episode up for you at least by the end of the week, hopefully. I might do short, that was about an hour long, I might do shorter episodes so I can get them to you quicker. So you're not waiting two or three weeks. This brush is a bit small now for that area, so I'm going to put that to one. So that, that's dried yet. Uh, if you're not a patron supporter, uh, do feel free. The address is, is, is down there in the video, so it is there somewhere. Patreon.com forward slash model making guru. Like I say, the Cesarbi is an exclusive bill because it's, it's, a, it's a Patreon reward bill for George. It's his reward for supporting me at the top tier patron level. Um, so he gets that reward. A little bit careless with the paint there, but a wash will hide that. If you ever go outside the line with a base colour, don't panic. I've gone a little bit outside the line there, but we're going to put a normal wash over that, so it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So yes, that is a Patreon exclusive. But don't forget, I know content's been a little short on my channel as of late. Purely because uh, various family reasons and also I have been working on George's Cesarbi. Um, so don't panic. Once George's Cesarbi is done, uh, it will be time for the perfect grade Millennium Falcon. Yes, now that's an E-Models build, so that will be uh, going on the regular YouTube channel. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So hopefully that should be coming up in... A few weeks, hopefully. As soon as I've got George's uh, Cesarbi done. Although, I've actually got so much to do on George's Cesarbi, it might take a while. Might take a while. I kind of realised that painting the outline on the inner frame is probably going to take me like weeks and weeks and weeks. <laughs> Thanks for that, Chris. It's going to take me a while, I think. Yes. I've been enjoying it. I'm enjoying it vastly. I'm looking forward to doing the Borderlands uh, weathering and painting on it. But there's all the inner frame that I need to do all the outlining on. And that's going to take me approximately forever. I've got all the armour to paint. And then do all the weathering and chipping and outlining on that. And then don't forget, of course, once I've done all that, I've still got my little sort of little diorama to do. I've got my figure. I've got a 120th, roughly 120th scale figure to go with it, and uh, I've got some extra bits to make. So there's still quite a lot to do. It may take me some time. I appear to be James Mason. I'm James Mason. Do do do. do. So, yeah, it's going to take a while, but as soon as that's done, then it's time for the perfect Grey Millennium Falcon. And then my plan is 
once the falcon's done i really need to get that conquest up to date so i think once the falcon's done it may just be hammering the warhammer conquest and what i'm tempted to start doing what i might start doing with warhammer conquest my original plan was just for each episode to be like follow the paint job in the magazine and then at the end go back and repaint everything but i'm kind of moving away from that now because i don't really need to show you how to paint stuff as it appears in the magazine because let's be honest it tells you how to paint in the magazine all i'm doing is parroting what's in there so what i may start doing is actually just doing a proper paint job anyway because i was going to have magazine level paint job for lots of stuff and occasionally for some of the more important things a full-on paint job and then when everything was finished go back and do a proper paint job what i may do is just do a whole damn proper paint job from the start there'll be lots of repetition of course because once i've painted a space marine i've probably got 40 more space marines to paint but it says me making you know double the episodes because I'm, I'm getting behind now and i don't want my front room filled with all the stuff that i'm because the it's really weird but it can in a way it's kind of it can really kill your mojo if you've got a big pile of stuff even if you really really want to do it you plonk down a big pile of stuff that keeps growing day by day or month by month it can be quite demotivating so it's important i just get on with that because you, you end up feeling kind of swamped and like you're drowning because no matter what you do it never seems to go down oh you were knew a girl like that once yeah moving on moving on i can't quite get around the back there sort of i can i can't can i what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna I'm going to take him off there. Can I get to that bit? I can't even see it to get to it. Never mind, get to it. I can just about reach it. No, I'm going to have to take him off. There we go. Allows me to see things. There we go. Call that Mingy Blue Tack. Mingy Blue Tack. I'll do the other one then we'll stick him back down again yes it can get a bit overwhelming so i think once i've done the falcon i think we'll go back to the well obviously we need to go back to conquest um but i think what i'll do is i'll just do proper paint jobs which would i i would estimate would typically take me about a week if i'm painting it's like you know uh, a vehicle that's probably about a week's worth of stuff to paint that's with the filming and editing and everything else on top. You know, you take about a week of non-stop painty painty. And filmy filmy. And it might be a case, for example, what I might do is while I'm catching up, just paint on the unusual things like the vehicles I've got or the scenery pieces, things like that. And then wait till I've got a bunch of Space Marines, for example, and paint them all in one go. Because I don't want like 30 episodes. Here we are again, painting Space Marines again. Like the other five times we painted Space Marines. So I want to minimise the number of episodes where I'm painting the same thing. So we'll see how it goes. So I might just start off by going a bit out of order. I might, I might film out of order, but then put them on the playlist in the right order, if that makes sense. What time are we on? Four o'clock. If that makes sense. <laughs> Way throwing things around. I'm throwing me Maureen everywhere. It's not good. I shall have a look at chat in a moment, peeps. Bear with me. Mm -hmm. While I'm doing this, don't forget, of course, uh, as always, uh, I do have a small, at the moment, small amount of merchandise available. 
t-shirts and hoodies than that. Uh, the range will get bigger. But there is a link in the description below the video to the uh, merch store. So do go and check that out. T-shirts and hoodies. Yeah, that's it. So and I do have an Amazon uh, store as well. There's a link down there for my Amazon store. If you need to be picking up any stuff for your model making, uh, you know, tools, equipment, things like that, bits and bobs, do pop along. And you, it's something you're going to be buying off Amazon. Then before you go and buy it off Amazon and spend all that money, uh, do pop along to my Amazon store. Again, there's a link in the description below this video. Uh, and see if it's in there if you're in the UK because it's UK only unfortunately but have a look in there if it's in there and consider getting it through that link because that's my that's my Amazon if you use that link you'll be really helping out my channel massively it's my affiliate link so do have a think if it's some if there's something that you need to pick up from Amazon that's not in there and you're in the UK give me a shout I can add it it'll take me like five seconds if you're looking for a, you know, gadget A or device B or whatever it is you're looking for, give me a shout. If it's on Amazon, it's in the UK. I can add it. Uh, okay, that's that there. I'm going to put it back on there for the moment. You sit down there like that. I'm going to move the brush covered in paint first for safety purposes. Yeah. Squish. 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 I need to do a second coat around the little thrusters at the back, but we'll do that in a moment. Uh, let's have a look. Do, 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 do. What is chat doing? The Millennium Falcon will only be a short series. I see what you did there, Jamie. I see what you did there. Ildi is taking a month off next month. I'll start that again. Ildi is taking a next month off building next month. I'll read that again. <laughs> I know what you mean. I had to read it twice there. Ildi's taking next month off from building just to recharge the batteries. That is the thing. It is. I've done that the wrong way around. Idiot. <laughs> uh, it is sometimes good to just take time out. If ever you start to feel burnt out or, you know, you, you, your mojo's gone and it won't come back or you're like, oh. Sometimes it is good just to step away. Just for a little bit. It is sometimes good to do that because it's a good way to recharge about and I've said before if ever you get to the point where you're either burnt out or your mojo has gone and you can't quite get it back and you if ever you get to the sit down at the bench and go then that's a sign that you need to go off and do something else for a while because it's like anything Whenever you do something, but you don't particularly want to do it at that time, your results are never going to be the best. And there's no point forcing it, because A, you're not going to enjoy it, and B, you won't do your best work. So with anything, if you're struggling to motivate, or, you know, for ideas, or you just it just feels like, I can't be doing it right now, just step away and do something else. In fact, that's an interesting question that gives me something for you guys to talk about in chat. What are your other hobbies? We all have, well, most, I mean, some of us, hopefully, not all of us, but some of us hopefully have secondary hobbies, other things that we like to do. Uh, what, what do you do when you're not on the bench? What are your other pastimes? Up until about six or seven years ago, I used to write music. I used to write and record I had a little recording studio set up here in this very room. I used to do what I would call symphonic electronica. Basically, it's had a collection, small collection of synthesizers, old and new. Uh, and I used to record music in the style of, say, Vangelis meets Jar meets a little bit of Tangerine Dream meets a little bit of Penguin Cafe sometimes. Uh, I used to use my music on things like pre-roll. Splurge the paint there, got a little bit of silver on the yellow, I'll have to tidy that up. Um, but I don't really use any of mine anymore. Not much, just because um, sometimes it gets copyright queried, even though it's my music, because it sounds similar to something else and, it gets, and I have to go and put a claim through and say, no, it's my music, it's fine, don't worry about it. 
I've never failed, I've always won, it's just a pain in the bum. So, I use the YouTube stuff at the minute, just because it's easier. Also, uh, I haven't got enough of mine to do a full half hour pre-roll. So I used to do that, uh, I don't do that anymore, I need to touch that yellow in there. I don't do that anymore, because uh, when I started doing the YouTube for the model making, um, what I did was, I actually... I needed the space because where all my my music equipment was is here where this table is now that I'm working on. I'm just doing a light glaze of the Avalon Sunset because Avalon Sunset is darker than this yellow but I want to blend that away. So what I've done is I've put a little tiny bit of Avalon Sunset down and I'm just getting a, some water on the brush and I'm just blending it ever so slightly so it blends into the brighter yellow. Now once I put a wash on that Later on, I'm going to do a null null wash around the silver parts. It will hide most of that, so it doesn't actually matter that the Avalanche Sunset is a little bit darker. Because there will be chipping and stuff as well to go on this and weathering. So that will hide a lot of sins, but it just blends it away for the moment. Um, now what I want to do is, I want to do the gun. Gun time! Uh, yeah, so I used to do that. That used to be my secondary hobby. Whereas the musics, uh, because I sold all the stuff, because it's all long gone, I can't do that anymore. So uh, at the moment, my real only secondary hobby, if I'm not at the bench working like this and filming, uh, then, I, well, I probably am doing something. Obviously, because I've got the social media side of this, I've got the just put my thumb on that. I? I've got me, you know, the website and boom hut and everything else. And just if I'm most times if I'm not at the bench filming I'm doing something else related to this like social media or I need to take him off again don't I oh, flipping Nora <laughs> something else related to this just the other day for example um, I spent an entire day literally an entire day sorting out an alternative streaming solution for the e-model stream on a Monday because we started using Jitsi or whatever it's called but it's just absolute garbage so we've got a new solution for Monday and I spent all I think was it Thursday or Friday figuring it out sorting it out working out the logistics I've still got a little bit left to do so if you're not at the bench I'm probably doing something like that uh, but on the rare occasion I'm not actually doing that or doing something in the boom hut or anywhere else uh, then I am on the Xbox not very often I don't get a lot of time anymore I'm trying to get the trigger guard it's quite tricky because it's tiny um, so yeah but the Xbox is my sort of refuge video gaming is my little refuge away from things It's not much of a hobby, I know, it's not creative or anything, or constructive, but it, it passes the time. I, don't, I sadly don't get a, a, enough time as I'd like on the old video games. When I used to have a 9 to 5 job, of course, um, then video games were... Because invariably, pretty much most jobs I've ever done have been absolute ass. They've just been absolute ass magnet jobs, like call centre monkey stuff so I've come home from work and be like I hate everything I'm just gonna play games for five hours and go to bed it was my refuge from a crappy work a day world basically uh, and then obviously started doing this I've got no crappy work a day world to hide from so I didn't feel the need but I still love I still love the hobby I still love playing the games so just don't get as much time nowadays Be -do 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 -do. But you know, a few years back, I would. Many would. Many would be the time that I would, you know, spend a horrible, horrible week at work. You know, mindless office stuff. I'd be like, oh. I mean, anyone who's ever done tech support, I wasn't technically doing tech support, but if you ever do tech support, if you've done a tech support call center job, where you're dealing 99% of the time with morons. Yeah, that's I, I understand that job. 
So Monday to Friday, nine to five was that. And I hated every minute of it. So I would get home on a Friday, I would turn on the Xbox, and then I would turn off the Xbox on Monday morning and go to work. Yeah, it's not quite that bad, but it's, yeah, I really would just lose myself over the years. I, you know, I didn't used to do that, but then I found Fallout 3, and then that was my world away from the crappy world I was, crappy job I was living. It was one of those jobs where you kind of live to work, and that's not right. You should never live to work. Um, but I had no choice, so. Yes. Oh, dropping, dropping. Well done, folks. Just drop everything. There you go. Right, so let's have a look. So we need to get this bit there. It's a little bit of... I'm not being careful with this right now because this gun is going to be painted a different colour anyway, so I can be careless with the... with the lead belcher. Um, I think that can just be red and then black. I'm not too fussed because you can't see a lot of the metallic -y areas around the back. You can see the inside of the... Oh, that's a point. You can see inside the the other side of the... Oh, other side of the magazine. Now, Simon, our Lord and Saviour Simon, actually disassembled this figure, took the, arm, the arms off. I've got to see if I can get some lead belcher on the other side of the magazine without actually getting paint anywhere else while well, I'm sticking my brush between his legs it were <gasps> carefully because you can see down the front although when you put his head on you probably can't you can see a little bit yes yeah, Simon took his apart and got like got access to the entire weapon but he did that with a saw he literally cut his figure apart yeah, I didn't have that either luxury or idea. But try not to get any of the lead belcher anywhere else. Carefully sending the brush in. There we go. I think we've got most of it. Yeah, that's got most of it. And anything you anything that it hasn't got will be hidden by the normal shade that's going to go over it anyway. I think we'll be good. I think we'll be good. What time are we on? Come up to half four. Nearly stick of time. I'll paint some of these little details. Uh, that can be silver. That can be silver. We'll go around and do a second coat. Lead belt is one of those colours that always looks terrible until you get the second coat on. And then it looks kind of mint. But I don't need to be neat because we're going to do painting around these. So for the moment I can just slap it on. Slap it on. Dooby 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 doo. So yeah, what are your what are your hobbies and pastimes? Because I'm no longer doing the music, I would say my pastime is video games, is Xbox. Oh, ping. And that's just a, a way to pass time. It's not like a hobby, it's not anything creative. Right, so I don't think I need to put metallic anywhere else. I think that's all the silver colours I need to do on him. I need to do a second coat, so I'll do that very, very quickly. Oh, I know what I need to do. Hang on. I missed that bit on the back. Probably end up redoing some of that because I'll hit it with the red, but never mind. Oh, no, this bit as well. Now, this is where the purists will lose their stuff because I don't know why I like to paint this bit. It stands out, and yet it's never painted a different colour. I like painting it a different colour. I don't know why. I just it just it just seems correct. So in my mind, in my universe, Spesmorines have this bit on the back silver. Just makes it a little more interesting. Oh, do, 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 little bit, little bit too thick. Uh, and we will. Now, when you're painting anything like this, 
when you're doing base colors like we are now the beauty of the paint and shade method of course is that you don't have to be exactly 100% accurate I'm using quite I'm using a, a small base brush here which is quite a big brush to use you don't have to be stupidly accurate because you know you're going to be adding a shade and a shade will hide some of the smoogy rough edges uh, you know anything where it looks a little bit ropey and not quite straight it's fine it's going to be fine because the shade will hide that so it will all be gravy I'll do a quick blast of a second coat on these if you want to keep your metallic smooth what I tend to do is make the second coat of lead belcher quite thin not a lot thin but I had more water than I normally would off the wet palette just to go over it quickly because what that does is it adds a second layer of paint now you've thinned it with water but it doesn't really matter because it's going over the same color so you're not going to see any like tide marks and stuff like that you thinned it with water but when it dries it's not going to be a thick stodgy coat but it's going to make it nice and bright and silver or more silver -er. well hopefully also in a few places just covering up any little patchy bits and it just makes it look nice and smooth without making it look too brushy because lead belcher can be quite prone to brush marks even if you thin it so you'll see there, I don't know if you'll see on camera, but that bit now looks a bit more lead-like than this one. When it dries, it'll have that kind of lead quality to it. Hence the name. It's a nice colour. I do like this colour. So the second coat, with metallics, the second coat is it doesn't need to be quite as thick as the first. Because the first just gets the base down. The second coat is just about... It's almost like a glaze, but not, not quite as thin as a glaze. But it's almost like a glaze. It's It's... it's unifying the whole but that's with the W not an H Bob's I knew a girl like that <laughs> mm. doodle -doo 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 -doo. that's the other thing with lead belcher as well if you got it on the wet palette if you're using a wet palette it's best to kind of work reasonably quickly because it's a beautiful paint but it does tend to separate out on the wet palette and after a while it'll just look grey it'll lose that little leady twins that little leady sheen uh, that it's known for and that's why the second coat the thin coat helps a little bit because you can mix it around a bit on the palette to get all the, the colour to ping again and also if you do two or three of them it's not going to hide all the details in a thick coat of paint so you can see I'm not being super careful on these little vents about a nice neat straight edge. I'm just applying this coat because I know they're going to have a shade of null oil. And that null oil will correct, collect around the edges and straighten them off. It'll trick the eye into thinking they're nice smooth edges. Make a bit of water on the wet palette. Not that much. And um, we'll just do a quick coat on here. I don't know why I kind of just did this back with a slightly thinner coat than normal ones and it just seemed to work so with the second thinner coat I can go into these recesses I didn't do it on the first coat because the first coat was normal thick paint the second coat I can go into the recesses it'll just it'll give them that lead belcher a color but they'll be a little tiny bit darker just a little tiny bit because they're a bit more transparent so you can still see the yellow through them a little bit rather than the whole thing just being one single flat color Uh, but you do need to work a little bit quick with this stuff. Oops. Well, no, that was there anyway. So we'll get this done, and then I'll come and join you in the chat for a bit. That bit where I went off the off the line there and got the paint on the me the metallic paint on the yellow. I've just done it in exactly the same place again. God damn it! <laughs> it'll hide. It'll hide away when I put other stuff on top. Also, watch your hands for paint on your hands because that can mess up any paint job bigly. Uh, so we'll go and do the bits on the gun. Die Bolte Gefahrten. You can see the second coat is a lot faster than the first coat. It's just 
bring in the shine without bringing too much texture. Because lead belcher, if you, if you just do one coat, it's just a kind of grey colour that is occasionally shiny. If you do more than one coat, you get the shiny effect, but you get texture and you don't want texture. And especially on this where it's had all that dry brushing, which has given it a slight texture anyway. I want to reduce anything like that as much as I can. So these extra thin coats just help to do And if I need to in some areas, I can do a third coat or a fourth coat. But again, just extra thin, not diluted. I'm not using glaze, I'm using water. And that's purely because it's going over the same colour anyway. It'll be fine. It'll all come good, you see. A little bit on that. A bit there. Be -be -boo, be -be -boo. By the way, I hope you can all see and hear me okay. I have the little furry hat on my new on the, my new furry hat on my microphone. It doesn't actually make any difference at all for this kind of recording because the microphone's over there. Um, but it just helps, for example, in the summer when I've got a fan going, it will help reduce the fan noise. Uh, it will help me when I'm doing voiceover work, reduce any any um, popping and buffeting, your P's and your B's and your T's, it'll get rid of any of that, hopefully. And it'll just reduce any sort of background noise, hopefully a little bit, make things sound a little less, a little more profesh. Right, so that's there. That's going to be most of it covered now, I think. Let's get a little bit off the side of the barrel. There we go. I think that's all the bits that need to be silver coloured on the actual body. Ooh, I could do the... Ooh, see, I, I like to do the belt buckle. I like to do the belt buckle in meta in silver. I don't know why. Let me consult the leg end. What, what colour is... Is there any specific colour for his... Uh, let's have a look on the artwork. Uh, he does have on his belt buckle... The Angry Marine logo, I can't get to it to do that, so that's not happening. What I might do is I might just paint the centre of the belt buckle red and leave the rest of it yellow, because, yeah, we'll just leave it yellow. I could do it silver. I like to do the belt buckle. I don't know why. I always like to paint the belt buckle silver, just to make them stand out from the rest of the armour. Right, so that can go there. He can stand there for a moment. Where's the thing gone? It needs to go there. Nee, squish, 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 it's fine, squish. There we go. That's him on there. Got a little bit to do on his head. Do I need to do more on his head? Uh, more on here, yeah, more on here. Yeah, moving on. Uh, yeah, a little bit more on his head. Just those bits on the back. I did a little bit, a little bit. Again, a little bit thinner than normal. Just to get coverage to get the metallic back so if you ever do if you ever find your lead belt you're not looking particularly lead belchery just do a second very thin coat now i have to say if you look at some of the box art for some of the vehicles like you know some of the say the orc vehicles where uh, like the the jet scrap jet thing if you look at that one of the one of the painted up vehicles is silver like bare metal and it looks like bare aluminium and I don't have a clue how they've painted that to look so nice and smooth. I mean, I've used lead belcher and the other paints to do bare metal effects. And it never looks as good as that. Not without, like, airbrushing it on and gloss coating it. And, yeah. So I don't know how they've done that purely. It's Obviously, it's the heavy metal team. I doubt they've just done brush painting. They'll have used anything they can... Oh, I messed that up. They've used anything they can get their hands on, to be honest. just realised I carefully painted that. I'm going to paint these tubes anyway. I didn't need to worry about that. I can go willy-nilly on this bit. There we go. Uh, I think that's the only metal bits I'm going to do. So, let's put the lid back on the wet palette. Red palette across the universe. I don't know if I'm singing with a pretend German accent. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to loosely put the head on because I don't want it to do any of the paintwork damage. So there we go. So that's the metals done. There's tons more to do. But that'll do for the base metal colours. Right, let's see what chat's doing. Uh, wow, chat's doing all kinds of things. Wow. I've missed chat massively here. Quick swig of coffee, then we'll do some sticker giveaways. 
I haven't seen Carl for a while. Where have you been, Carl? Carl's normally in when we give stickers away. I've not seen him for a while. Uh, right, I've missed out some stuff. Let's have a look. Uh, Earl D, got an Epion to do before that for my pile of customs. Can decide if there's a bill or not. So not so far according to package tracking. It's had an attempted delivery. The other says pay. Okay, I know what that is. Uh, basically, somebody, uh, Earl D is doing a, a build and paint for someone. They've sent him the partially built kit, but he's getting a customs charge slapped on it. Yeah. Fox, are you going to do an AO of a... Wow, start again. Fox, are you going to do, asks Mordraka, an Age of Sigmar Mortal Realms part work once Conquest is over? Um, me, personally, probably not. Um, I'm only doing the Warhammer 40k one through the good graces and kindness of George, uh, who's helping me uh, subscribe to it, helping fund it. Uh, Age of Sigmar, I mean, I might do. Don't know, maybe. Possibly not, because I have no interest in... I mean, the gold dudes, they're just gold dudes. Once you've painted one, they're all the same. And the, the skeleton dudes don't interest me. If it was, say, uh, the gold dudes versus Skaven, then I'd be interested in that Skaven. But, no, uh, it's... I'm, I don't know. It depends. I wouldn't have any desire to spend 800 quid on it, personally, myself. And like I said, it's only through George's good graces, because he's, help, he's helping me out with the... The Warhammer Conquest, because I've said it before, and you probably don't know, but um, when I finish the Warhammer Conquest stuff, George and I are going to split it half and half, so he gets one army, and I get the other. I keep the other, so whichever one he wants, if he wants the Space Marines, I'll take the, the Death Marines, or whatever they are, the Death Guard, if he wants the Death Guard, I'll take the Space Marines. So we're kind of doing it that way, so, because he's helping fund that, so, yeah, the Age of Sigmar, eh, eh, the Skeleton Dudes, the, I don't know, they don't... In I don't know, because I look at it and I just see, I see like a whole mass of gold dudes and a whole mass of skeletons and like, they're all kind of the same. There's not a lot of video material you can get out of that. Whereas the Warhammer stuff, you've got vehicles, you've got scenery, you've got space marines, you've got plague marines, you've got death walker things, you've got pox walkers, you've got other things, all different bits and bobs. And I don't know, it just doesn't excite me as much. We'll see, we'll see, I don't know. If I'm suddenly flush with money, I might do. But yes. Uh, same question to the rest. Well, anyone is doing the conquest, are you going to do the Age of Sigma or Mortal Realms? Uh, Ian's car says, depends on the money and time. Sam Reynolds says, nah, I presume it would be Sigmarites versus Night Haunts, and the plastic quality is crap in my experience. Yes, it is Sigmarites, it's Sigmarines versus the Skeleton Dudes. So I have no interest in any of them because you can paint the Skeleton Dudes with shade, with contrast paints dead quickly or with a bit of a glaze, and the gold guys are just kind of gold. So I don't know. It just doesn't 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 float my boat, really. Uh, not doing the subscription for Conquest, but I've signed up for Mortal Realms only a trial at the moment, so several months before we see anything. Uh, I have been sent. I mean, the uh, Lindsay did send me. Uh, Fluffy Guts did send me a load of the 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 um, Sigma side of the whatever the box set is, the one with the skeleton dudes and the gold guys that most of that will come from. She sent me all the Sigmarines out of that because she bought the skeleton dudes so you know it i will get them painted up and i'll be interested in playing the game um no problem with that at all but in terms of from my point of view getting a month 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 a month a month long or year long or a couple of year long video project out of it it'll be hard for me to translate my enthusiasm for it if i'm not that enthusiastic for it really uh, can agree with about taking breaks from when I was talking ages ago. Uh, lost my mojo for Gumpla, that's why I'm going back to mini four-wheel drives. Cool. Not burnout, but a break kind of keeps actual burnout away. Uh, Earl D says your guitar repairs and guitar teaching are my other loves. Uh, I don't know if you saw this. Uh, Earl D will know what this is, but I was watching uh, Adam Savage build his um, fake Sony Walkman prop for his Star Lord costume. Uh, and he used, I'd never thought of this, but he wanted to varnish over it to do like a gunk wash, effectively. And he used guitar varnish, guitar lacquer, which dries really quick and it's really hard wearing. And I'm like, oh yeah, never thought of that. Guitar lacquer, it's hard and it's shiny. Uh, Cy Reynolds says, plays airsoft with the brother-in-law. It's good fun. Awesome. Uh, Eric says, gardening and meteorology. Gardening even and meteorology. Interesting, interesting. See that science? I, I applaud anyone that does any kind of science for fun because science is fun. Science is fun. 
if I if I if if I had a, if I could have a dream come true, it would be that somehow, for some reason, for whatever reason, I could present like a factual documentary series, like Cosmos or you know Connections. I'd love to do that. I'd love to just. Be, I'm, I never will. I'm just, but you know, science is fascinating. I, I'm very science oriented. I'm not knowledgeable. I'm an idiot, and I had not the best science education. But it does. I do find it very very interesting. Uh, Spinny Kurt says, my other hobbies and pastimes include coffee. Very few people know this. Yeah, nobody knew that. Uh, Space Ham says, I actually used to be the guy who did illustration and played in bands, and I didn't quite quit those things or anything, but model making has just totally taken over in the last two odd years. I forgot to mention, I did do, I did the drawing as well. Um, for five years, I had a webcomic. Uh, and before that, I'd always been trying to start a graphic novel that I never did. Uh, if you want to read the webcomic, it's on my website, modelmaking.guru or modelmakingguru.com. Either will take you to the same place. If you go to my website on the homepage, one of the menu options at the top right says avoid spikes. That was my webcomic for about five years. Uh, Just Django says, aside from mini four-wheel drive, I really like Guitar Hero and Trails games, getting real good at them. Awesome. My mum plays Bejeweled all the time, all day, every day. I don't know. She's still like 3,000th on the leaderboard. It's like, how do you, how are you not like first because you've been playing it for 15 years? Quano Man is in. I'm late. You're late. You're late. Uh, I get detention now, he says. Yes. Chris at Gross Model says, other hobbies include archery and Xbox. Team Inept. Like and subscribe. Yes. What kind of bow do you prefer, Chris? Says Paul. Talking about his, uh, his bow and arrow bow. Yeah, Paul and Chris do archery. They fire arrow, they throw arrows at each other. Not literally. Uh, Stefan Last is a music collector, mainly CDs. Got over 5,300. And no, I'm not married. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how being single helps with things like that. Mostly all sorts of electronic pop, late 70s through today. But there's some other stuff in there too. Uh, George Gabriel says, my hobbies are Overwatch. Never would have guessed. And uh, mini painting. There you go. George likes his Overwatch. Boy, does he ever. That's why I'm making him an Overwatch Cesarbi. And he has the hat and the jacket and the, the, all the outfits. And the, Ed loves his Overwatch. Uh, I have really realised that Overwatch hasn't been going for about three years. It feels like it's been going for, forever. You know, it's like one of those things that you think it's been around for years and years. It's only been going for like two and a half, three years. And yet it's just unanimous, uh, uh, ubiquitous. Uh, print guru says my other hobby is cooking today i'm making peach chutney Ooh, it's our local summer fair next weekend the missus is going to enter it into the chutney competition you're obviously british and probably i'm going to say somewhere towards the south coast or like east anglia type below birmingham but in the nice you know the nice areas below birmingham i'm going to guess something like that i could be wrong i could be completely wrong but i'm going to make that guess and just with the local chutney. Um, yeah, I'm going to make that guess. That sounds nice. Like peach chutney. Ooh, I like a nice chutney. I like a nice chutney, do I? Um, uh, now we're talking about call centre work. Spid says, try working face to face with morons who steadfastly refuse to listen to logic, reason, scientific fact and evidence in front of their eyes because they know that can't be right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one things that drive me nuts are stupidity and scientific illiteracy. Uh, Jamie Bowen says, if I'm not model making, my hobby is going on the Xbox. Good lad. Yes. If you are, if you are gamers out there, any, uh, I'll say that again. If any of you out there are gamers, tell you what, you know what I mean? I've got to tell you this now before we do that bit. When I, when I talk to you, I'm looking at the microphone to make sure it's picking up me talking. But because I've got that new fluffy thing on that, I'll show you what it is. I've got my fluffy thing on them. Look at it. Look at it. I can't I have to physically stop myself reaching out and stroking it because it is so soft. I don't know where the camera's supposed to be now. I've got to adjust my focus now. I have to really, really... Where's the centre? Let me put him there so I can see him. I have to really... I've messed it up now. Oh, there we go. You can see guth on a bit of pressure as well. So there you go. Oh, I shouldn't have done that now. It's all gone wrong. Hang on, let me just... Are we in focus? Yeah, near enough. So yeah, I, I, so I look at the microphone when I'm talking like to you guys, and I just I want to just go oh and give it a fuss, but I can't because you'll like then you'll hear it. You'll, oh, it's just so I can't explain to you how soft it is. It's the softest thing I've ever felt. It's so soft. Uh, what was I talking about? I've got no idea now. 
Yo, yes, if you are a gamer, if one of your pastimes is playing video games, um, let us know what you play. Well, uh, now we don't want to. I don't want a, con a you know, console war or format war on the in the chat. Don't care if you play on PC or Xbox or PlayStation or Switch or what. Atari Pong machine. I don't buy a tone Pong, but I don't care. Let's find out what you play. Uh, my games of choice are. Uh, I like me some Destiny when I just want to shoot things because it's mindless. And I, their, their shooting is really, really good. Uh, I enjoy open world stuff, so Fallout Three. I adored Fallout Four. I don't mind Fallout Four. Put a load of mods on it; it can be quite good. Just again for just wandering around uh, and exploring. I like exploring and things. I'm not really a. I'm not anymore. I'm too old to be a twitchy first-person shooter type. Fast reactions. Although I say I do like Destiny because it's good fun. Stuff like that. Uh, and but and uh, Elite Dangerous because that's just that really is just. I could lose a whole day on Elite Dangerous. In fact, I regularly do. <laughs> you can't see Guthorm now. He's sit there, Guthorm. There you go. Pop your head over like that. There you go. Uh, do, 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 do. I used to do a lot of fishing, says Lewis Williamson, but now I'm either at work, long distance lorry driver, or at the bench of my kids, one of which has just painted a very beetle in bright pink. Ooh, three-year-old girl. Awesome. Put a picture in the boom hut. Uh, the only rules in the boom hut, by the way, Lewis, are be awesome. That's it. That's the only rule. And have fun. Don't be serious. Have fun. Uh... Print Guru, I was even on MasterChef a long time ago, got into the third round in about 2005, wow. Uh, Wayne Haywood says, I lost interest with consoles when I discovered model making, miniatures painting, and tabletop gaming. Aye. Now I've actually experienced a very simple form of tabletop gaming when I was playing the uh, Daka Daka Rally in the Warhammer Store birthday. Yeah, as soon as I got enough dudes painted up and got the codex for that I can go and play a game, I'm going to arrange to go and play again because I, I want to play some games now. Speedy Career entered an archery competition once, forgot the keystone, and mine collapsed. Uh, I just got that. Arch, keystone. Shut up. <sighs> Elon's car says, Aha, we're talking about hobbies. Well, how about gaming, cooking, and reading alongside building and painting minis? Cy Reynolds says, Never put wet metallics on a wet palette. The flake will fall through your parchment and contaminate your sponge and thus your water. Um, it, yeah, it does a bit. But my, my parchment uh, is replaced every day anyway. My, my sponge is tissue that I replace when I replace the parchment. So I'm not really that fussed. Also, it, it's not, it isn't actually ideal when you're doing a wet palette. It's not actually ideal because it does separate out the flake a little bit. But lead belches a little bit. Uh, what was that? Uh, ooh, we have a new subscriber. Leo Glazebrook has subscribed. Thank you, Leo. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, you can, your flake can disappear a bit, which is why it separates out on a wet palette. I mean, ideally, you don't want to have it on a wet palette at all. But, yeah, I'm a bit of a stickler for that. But hey. I haven't got anything to use as a palette, actually, to be honest. Uh, the, the, I would never put... One thing I would never put on a wet palette are any of the Vallejo metal colours. Because they are super, super thin. They're super, super thin. Super, super thin. You don't need to put them... You don't need to add anything to them. They're the perfect thickness already. Uh, replace my lead belt with gunmetal from the, Mer the Mech colour range, says LD. Aye. Very good paint that. A terrorist. Good afternoon, Fox and friends. I've returned from my adventures in Portugal. Excellent. Tell us how your adventures in Portugal were. Were they Portugally? Uh, do do do. Uh, let's have a little catching up now. Uh, people, games people are playing. Let's have David Butcher. That model is in. Welcome, Dave. What ho, chaps? He says. Uh, hang on. Our chat just jumped. Uh, do, 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 do. Chat just jumped a massive amount. I've lost everybody now. Okay, I may miss out a lot of chat because it just jumped and I don't know where I'm up to. There's a terrorist. Stuart Rose. Hey, Stuart. Says, I thought I'd say hello. I'm in Sacramento in the US on holiday. Just popped to say hi. I'm normally in York. Welcome from Sacramento. I'm a Sacramento even. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Alex Adoof Studios. Alex says, We broke $5,000 for Simon. Dudes, guys, girls, well done. The, the original goal, we were saying at the start, Simon from Gundam UK, uh, the GoFundMe, the original target was three grand. Just to have a, give him and his wife and two kids a little bit of money so they can survive while he's not able to do pretty much anything. Because he's, he's not able to work. So they put a target of three grand and they've just hit five grand. You guys are awesome. You guys are just brilliant. Uh, 
Thanks in big part to the Boom Hut, says Alec. I did put a thing up in the Boom Hut. Yeah, if you want the link, um, you can either get... It's posted up in the Boom Hut. I think it's an announcement on the top of the page, or go to the announcement section. It's on my personal page, Model Making Guru. My, my, my page page, not my personal page. Um, or if you're on... While you're on YouTube, if you go to Zachary Aurelius, Zach's channel, he put a video up as well with a link in the description in his video. And I've also put a link below the description of this video. Uh, underneath the Goblin Game one, there's one just for the for the GoFundMe. So if you'd like to help, but well done uh, to the guys so far, and keep going, keep going, because we like uh, Simon's good people. He's really good people. Uh, apparently, Alex says he still can't speak much yet, but he's giving thumbs up and whatnot and typing with his right hand with no issues. Yeah, it's his left side that's that was paralysed or mostly paralysed. So it's good that you can at least type. A friend of mine actually had uh, just, well, has just had lots of treatment for cancer. Uh, and just at the end of that also had a, a, a stroke, small stroke, thankfully, if you can be thankful for any kind of stroke. Uh, had a very small stroke. And right after she'd had it, they she like had real trouble talking, something you do all the time without even thinking. And suddenly it was like really... She says to me, it's like, you have to think about every single word you're saying. You can't just say, yes, I'd like a cup of tea. Thank you very much. You have to think about every single word. And because you're thinking about the word, your brain's working overtime to get the word out, to, out of your mouth. I can't even imagine it. So, yeah. Uh, Chris at Gross Models. Good news, Alex. Please send him all our best. Uh, people talking about motorbikes now. Uh, my secondary hobby is aircraft. Uh, aircraft, no airsoft. Says, oh, we've done that one. Uh, Richard Gibbs says, "Oops, ready chat before my comment. Just to clarify, I was say about Adam Savage. I think it's classed as a sports tourer. I don't know. I've lost the thread there. I think. Oh, the print guru says, "Haha, no central London local park summer fair. I was saying he must live in one of the nice like East Anglia type middle class." Terry and June type things because Chutney competitions. It's very Terry and June, isn't it? Oh, look, the vicar. Oh, my bank manager. Oh, British sitcom. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, but I asked what people what games they play. Let's have a look and see what they say uh, before we go and do some sticky giveaways because it's coming up to five o'clock. Uh, David Butch, that model says World of Warcraft and World of Tanks. Cool. Are you playing the newly released classic World of Warcraft, even though it's broken at the minute? <laughs> Uh, inter incidentally, in interestingly, um, Warcraft and a few of the places were docked, uh, uh, were DDoSed <laughs> over the last day or so. Um, and I was just reading up on it and reading up some of the things in various places. And it's like, very, very quickly, the people that were apparently doing the DDoSing were tweeting, tweeting about it. And their own Facebook pages could easily be found from the tweets and everything else so people are like within about a few hours they're like yeah we know who these guys are now look there's his facebook page <laughs> yeah and then somebody else pointed out the last time somebody ddos like blizzard they went to jail for a year and got fined 30 grand so, good luck with that let's have a look at what are people playing don't understand why you do that anyway and what's the point it's just ddosing is not hard you doesn't require any skill as hacker skill uh, League Legends book says Fortnite and Call of Duty. Welcome, Lee. Coming out from the corner there. Uh, Fortnite and Call of Duty. I used to be a big. I used to be massively into first-person shooters, but I think after Fallout Three came out and I, I experienced open world to a certain degree, I kind of, kind of lost the mojo for just straightforward first-person shooters. Well, I still, you know, I still like them. I don't really get them anymore because they, they don't. I don't know. Which is why I like Destiny a bit, because it's a little bit open world, but it's not really. It's a little bit of like first person shooter with some of the stuff thrown in. It's, it's got a lot of faults to it, but you know. Uh, so look, uh, Eon's Car says Fallout 4 and other RPG games and Minecraft. Never tried Minecraft. Uh, More Dracker says Star Wars The Old Republic. Yes, I know what that means. Star Wars The Old Republic, Division 2, World of Warcraft, Vampire, and Destiny 2. I'm not familiar with Vampire, but Destiny or Vampire. But Destiny 2, Division 2. Yeah, I, I never got into the. I just have this thing about Ubisoft games. Uh, the number of times I've tried an Ubisoft game and the training. Basically, if your if your game has a fail state in the training sequence, I'm going to sour on your games very very quickly. 
Uh, personal games of choice at the moment says just Django uh, Guitar Hero 3 Clone Hero Minecraft and Mini Legends it's an app but you can't play for a while since it's on my iPhone which needs repairs Paul at Team Annette we're talking about like doing mixing uh, metal using metallics on not on a wet palette is use your cutting mat it's the best palette Paul uses his cutting mat as the palette uh, let's have a look what else we got Chrono Man says just transferred Splinter Cell Blacklist to the Xbox One because I like the sneaky sneaky stabbity monkey bits Jamie Bone says I like playing sport games but I'm currently playing Forza Horizon 4 that counts as sport I think doesn't it I mean motorsport is kind of sport I suppose it's not like athlete sport but it's still sport uh, Alex Adoof Studios says no idea what chutney is <gasps> oh. have you ever been for curry and you've got like a dip it's a mango flavoured dip that's mango chutney Chutney is how do you explain it? Somebody explain chutneys. It's like they're often made with fruits or um, preserves, but they're like got a, kick, a like spicy kick to them. It's like a I don't know. Some, I can't really explain it. Somebody explain what a chutney is. Uh, it's old Indian thing that we from the days of empire we completely stole from uh, Indian cuisine and made our own. Basically, we probably didn't. I don't know if we did. Uh, Dave says, no, it's not classic. I'm an old classic as it is. Quantum Man says, I used to work as a carer for elderly in the last stage of dementia, which is caused by stroke. And most of the time, if you take the time to listen carefully, you can still work out what they are saying. Yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's the thing. I think the thing, the difficulty is not necessarily for the people listening, like with my friend when she was struggling to talk. We, we're all kind of, myself and my friends, it's, it might sound really harsh, but we were kind of, taking the mickey a little bit out of her just a little bit because what she was doing was thinking really really hard and processing how to move her mouth and tongue and, and breathe to make the words come out um, so talking was quite exhausting but what she sounded like was like she'd just come off the boat from the caribbean she had this fantastic caribbean accent and she talks like me she's a northern lass so we were kind of taking the mickey a little bit, but that's kind of the kind of friends we are because we, we, you know, we're not all serious, serious. We'll, we'll take the mickey out of each other. But it, it's more, I think the frustration for her at least was it's more the thing that she's having to do all that work just to do something that you do without thinking. So to, to not be able to, to communicate or I can't imagine the frustration of, you know, in your mind what you want to say, but you just can't get the words that like you can't say it and watching people around you sit there wait for the next word or this oh i can't imagine that so i'm really hoping for simon that he just he makes a fast and speedy recovery he'll get back he'll come back he'll come back he's a good lad uh got to go now roast beef and all the trimmings hopefully be back if not i will be in chris's stream later says jamie thanks for coming in jamie i'll, I'll be going at six you're probably still eating your tea but yeah i'll definitely see you later in chris's stream but thanks for coming in buddy Chutney is a pickle, says Mordraker, made from fruit, vinegar, sugar, and spices. That doesn't make it, that doesn't sound anywhere near as awesome as it actually is, but yes. Mango chutney, all kinds of chutneys. They're kind of savory, but made, it's like a, they're weird, they're kind of sweet and savory at the same time. It's like a, it's like a savory jam, but sweet with, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Is Piccalilli a chutney? Does pick a lily count as a chutney? Because it's not made from fruit, though, is it? Somebody find out if pick a lily is a chutney. And George, when I send you the Cesarbi, I've got a load of things that I'll need to include in the box. And if I can, I remember. I probably won't, but if, I, if you've never had it, I'll have to remember to send you some pick a lily. Oh, pick a lily. Oh, pick a lily. Yes. Right, shall we uh, do some sticker giveaways? I've caught up with the chat now. Caught up with chat. There you go. Right, so. It is time for the sticker giveaways. Yeah, that's a stick. That's a stick. So today we shall do we shall do a model maker league guru. We shall do a scaly models, and we shall do a Festa sixty sevens workshop. Uh, remember, if you have whatever your organisation is, if you have a YouTube channel or you have whatever you do, uh, if you have stickers and you want me to give them away because it's a free bit of PR for whatever it is you, as long as it's not like you know, it's not going to be like for you. I don't know something really shady i'm not giving stickers away for like you know scientology or some crap like that but as long as it's nothing shady if you have an endeavor and you have stickers for example i'll happily give them away and a bit of free pr for you guys uh so yes so today we have me dad scaly models and we have colin at festa 67's workshop he's not with us today colin in the in the chat uh 
So what we're going to do, this is the, the, we've done this before. If you've never seen one of these before, basically I'll give one of these away. I'll ask you a question. Whoever gets the answer right in chat first is the person that wins that sticker. I need to write a word on the back of each sticker. Before we do anything, you know how this works. By now, there is always a lag or a noticeable lag between the video that you're watching with all your eyes and the chat. Um, so before we do anything, you need to press the refresh button on your browser, hit the refresh button and drag the slider to the right. So hit refresh and drag refresh and drag refresh and drag. Nobody's talking in chat because you're all looking up Picky Lily now, aren't you? A, you're all trying to remember how the hell to spell it and B, you're all looking up if it's a chutney. So yeah, refresh and drag to make sure your uh, video is as close as possible to the chat. Now, don't forget, um, I'm going off the chat in front of me here, which is the chat that YouTube sees, the chat that will be on the video if you go back and watch it later. When you see the chat at your end, you're not seeing that chat because when you type an answer, you'll appear first on your list because your chat is you there. Just because you're first on your telly box, on your chat, on your screen, doesn't mean you are first in the actual chat. So what you need to do is look at this thing here. That is the chat that I'm seeing. So that will be the first and just make sure I'm on live. I'm on live or make sure I'm on live and not top chat. Hang on. Oh, I've got to go all the way to the top now. Oh, yes, we're on live chat. There we go, right down to the bottom. Uh, so yes, so that that chat there is the one that I see. So just because you're first on your screen doesn't mean you're actually first. Paul DeTomas says, oh, be right back. Oh, we timed that wrong. Um, so stickers from Elegance Gentlemen's Club in Portsmouth <clears throat> are not wanted. Yeah, don't be giving me like Spearmint Rhino stickers and things that are a bit dubious. Uh, right, for this one, we shall write some words on the back. We shall write, um, we shall write floof. Um, We shall write um, squiggle, but squiggle like the thing that's in your garden and eats all your nuts. Squiggle, you see, it's a squiggle. <laughs> We've got squiggles in our garden, eat all the peanuts. Uh, and the last one, I shall put skill level Japan. Because whatever you do in life, whatever you actually do, uh, Paul says no goblin stickers today. I think I've actually run out of goblin stickers. Uh, if anybody at Goblin Gaming is watching, do send me some more. I'll, I'll, I'll come and get some anyway. I think I've run out of goblin gaming stickers now. Um, yes, if whatever you do in life, here we go. Whatever you do in life, I don't care what it is. There is always going to be someone in Japan who does it a billion times better than you. Don't care what it is. If you make sculptures out of scrap iron with welding equipment, someone in Japan makes the same sculptures no bigger than a grain of rice. If you paint the most amazing paintings, somebody in Japan will paint those same paintings on a grain of rice. It's just, they're insane. There's, nobody can do anything better than a Japanese person. It's just, I don't know how they do it. Yeah, there's one guy who was selling a gumpler. He, he sold a gumpler that he built. It was like a... Um, I can't remember which one it was. It might have been an Epion or a, I don't think it was an Epion. It was something anyway. It was just a regular gun mod, master grade gumpler kit. He spent 10 years building it and painting it and he was selling it for £10,000. $10,000. And it was like, yeah, you can tell he's Japanese. He spent 10 years building and painting that. George Gable says, I nap pretty damn well. Nope, there's always somebody in Japan that will do it better than you. Probably a cat, let's be honest, if it's, if it's napping. So we've got Floof, we've got Squiggle. And we've got skill level Japan. I need that skill level Japan sticker, says just Django. There we go. Uh, right, so we need to ask some questions. So I need to think of some questions. God damn it. I'll have a swig of coffee and we'll have a think. Uh, um, let's have a think and see. I can't think of any questions. Uh, let's have a think. What have I been reading or listening to or watching or... Mm -hmm. There's a lid on a paint up there and it's not closed properly. That'll be dry right now. Uh, let's have a think. Can't think of anything now. Can't think of anything. Um...
here's a question for you. Here's a question for you. Uh, sort of a sciencey question. More of a science writing knowledge question, but there you go. Now, I'm going to paraphrase this. This isn't the exact wording. Um, but who said, who said, or is known for saying, words to the effect of, uh, there's a certain point at which advanced technology becomes so advanced it appears no different to magic. Along those lines, who said that? Go. Do, do, do. It's somebody, somebody who says, uh, it's along the lines of, you know, technology gets to the point where it's so advanced to the person observing it that it appears no different to magic. Do, 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 do. More Draca is straight in with horribly spelled, but absolutely correct, uh, Arthur C. Clarke. Yes, Arthur C. Clarke, uh, visionary and uh, futurist and writer of great books said uh, yeah it was along those lines he was looking at um it's really was it was aimed at looking at um you know for alien civilizations in space uh, and looking at technologies and things like that and he was saying you know if you went back with technology from today this is going back 30 or 40 years technology from today to the middle ages it would be seen as magic and potentially evil and everything because you know to, to, even, to anything that's vastly more advanced than than you can understand it can be perceived as no different to magic it's like if you don't understand how it works you, you know what i mean i i can't remember the i'm doing it off the top of my head now so <laughs> but yes arthur c clock so uh more Draca got that right so more Draca, would you like a floof squiggle or skill level japan so festa six seven workshop scaling models or one of mine who would uh, which one would you like Let's wait and see which one he wants. What does the C stand for? Arthur. I don't know. If he never used it, it's probably something like Colin. <laughs> or uh, it'll be a really embarrassing name like, um, uh, I don't know. I can't think of it. <laughs> oh, he said Squiggle. Oh, there we go. Yes, he did say Squiggle. So he wants to Squiggle. So there we go. So more Draca. Well done. And I suspect... There we go, more Draca. Uh, somebody said, Beyond Hope says, Fox, is the second or third year of your streams. You always give away stickers. Why are you never prepared with questions? Because I am a professional idiot. I don't I don't prepare things. Nobody prepares things. If you, I'm a bloke, I'm British, and I'm an idiot. There's no such thing as organisation. Uh, right, so that's those two. So we have floof and skill level Japan left. Now Dave has just sent me some questions. I will not show my credit cards on screen because that would be a bad idea. Uh, let me have a look and see. Email, email, do, 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 which email account is that one? Now remember Dave, you can't answer this because you're not allowed to do stickers. Okay, here we go. <laughs> right, here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, God. Crap. Yes, I have got through. I forgot about that, Chris. Thank you for reminding me because it's under a pile of stuff over here. Hang on. Yes. I also have, and I'll do... I'll do... Um, Dave's question a bit. I did get a book from Chris. He sent me the Lift the Flap Questions and Answers About Space book. So this can be a good source of questions as well. Yes. So I forgot about that. Thanks, Chris. I, I, I remembered earlier on today, I thought I need to get that book out. To ask the question, and then I totally forgot because it's under the Sasabi box. Oh. Right, so uh, right, I'll do the I'll do the quick uh, Dave question, and then we'll do a science question from the book of Chris. So here we go. Everybody ready? Next question. Now remember, I don't check this for correctness. So there you go. Everybody ready? In the Discworld book, Discworld Terry Pratchett, best writer there ever was. In the Discworld book, what is the name? Of the six foot dwarf in the city watch. Go. Only Terry Pratchett could have a six foot dwarf. Best writer ever, Terry Pratchett. Sadly missed. Sadly, sadly missed. Will Chris get 60 stickers now? <laughs> Looking for the full name. Or the full name or the full title and name. For whatever I've got written down. One of you's got almost there. 
thy creator, I uh, that will do. Yes, thy creator is a carrot iron founderson. Yes, it's correct. Carrot iron founderson or Captain Carrot will do. So there you go. Well done because we're looking for the full name or the full title and name. So well done. Uh, thy who got that? Thy creator. Well done. Would you like floof? Or would you like skill level Japan? Which one would you prefer? Thanks for the question, Dave. Much appreciated. I shall wait for thy creator to answer that. Do 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 do. Collins, he wants skill level Japan. So there you go. Thy creator. Awesome. Well done. That's that one. So we just got floof. It's always mine that's last. Have you noticed that? It's like the fat kid that nobody wants to have on their team. <laughs> oh well. Right, so for the last one, we shall do from the book of science question and answers. Now, some of the questions are, in it are a bit aren't really useful. Um, like what, you know, some of the questions are a bit open ended. Like, what do astronauts do all day? Well, I can't ask you that because there's probably a billion answers. So let's have a look and see what what's in the good doctor's bag. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to show you first of all. Uh, Okay, I've got to find one. That's, they're all kind of like, here's a paragraph of information. They're not like straight off black and white answers. Um, okay, here we go. Nice and easy one. Nice and easy one. Are we ready? <laughs> Chris of Christmas. Amazon keeps trying to make me buy all the other books in the series now. It's like me when I go onto YouTube. If I watch a Glove and Boots episode on YouTube, all my suggestions are now children's cartoons. I'm like, oh, for God's sake, like animated series and stuff. I'm like, oh, shut up. Right. Uh, okay, here we go. Here's one that's got a definite answer. Ready? How many people have been to the moon? Go. Now, there's a definite answer for this. How many people? I've got to check. Yes. How many people have been to the moon? Did it, diddle, 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 boo. Two? Do, do, uh, Lewis Williamson is the first in with 12. Yes, only 12 in total. And nobody has been to the moon since 1972. That's over 40 years ago. And they look like that in the 1960s. I like the fact they've done that kind of 1960s style drawing for it as well. Fantastic. So yes, 12 in total. Only 12 people have been to the moon. So there you go. Well done. So who won that one? That was uh, Lewis Williamson. Well done. You've won yourself uh, a sticker. You have won yourself a model making guru sticker. You have no choice. <laughs> uh, if you won a sticker and you want to make sure you get it, you need to mail me at, address is always here, fox at modelmakingguru.com. The email address is there. Send me an email. In the title, just put, you've won a sticker. Uh, and give me your, and in the message, let me know your name, your address, and if it's different, your YouTube name. So if, you're, if your real name is Lewis Williamson, but on YouTube you were XXX Sniper 47 XXX, you need to make me know all of that, because I won't know who whatever I write down on here is so now I am still waiting so you three just send me an email I know some of you already had if you're waiting for email for stickers already do be aware it can take me months to send these out and I, I build up a big pile and then panic and send them all out so if you're waiting for a sticker already and you win one today mail me anyway if I've got five emails for you I know I'll probably need to send you five stickers so I'll put these in the to-do pile now I do have um, some stickers still to go because some of you out there haven't yet mailed me. So if you are. Uh, no, I know who that is. Uh, I know who that is. OK, some of these are from last week, but I've forgotten which is which now. So uh, if you've mailed me for these already, then ignore this. I've got a sticker for Stuart Torrance. Sticker for Eon's car. I think I've had one from that one. Uh, oh, no, here we go. Deaths0079. I've not had an email from you. You won yourself a scaly model sticker. Balaclava Bob. I've not had an email from you. Uh, Vasily. I've not had an email for your guru sticker. Uh, Retro Rabbit. You won a scaly model sticker. I've not had an email from you. 
Champchi won a Guru sticker. Not had an email. Champchi again won Butts. Just Django. I think I've had an email from you on that one, but if not, mail me. I might have had some of these. Uh, and I, I think these are from last week. So Eon's Car, Stuart Torrance. I think I've had an email from you. Nibs, and uh, Thy Creator, and Just Django. I've had those, but I'm looking for mails from... These are from months ago. Champchi, Retro Rabbit, Vasily, Balaclava Bob. Or it might just be Bob. I don't know. I wrote Balaclava Bob on the back. Uh, and Deaths 0079. You haven't mailed me. So I've still got the stickers from months ago. So fox at modelmakingguru.com. The email address is there on the screen. Send me an email uh, with your name, your address. And I need to know your YouTube name as well. If it's different. If, you, if your YouTube name is Bob Smith and your actual name is Bob Smith. I can get that. Because I'll have written Bob Smith on the back of the sticker. If your YouTube name is Blebulon and you say, Hi, I'm Ted Johnson. I want a sticker. I'll be like, brilliant. Which which sticker did you win? So, yes. Mail me if you haven't already. Uh, Eons Cast. I've sent you a mail. I'll send you another one. If you've already mailed me, though, Eons, don't send me another one. Because then I'll think I owe you two stickers then. So, it'll panic. Uh, Just Django says, I've mailed you. Cool. Um, yeah, some of those are... Not old stick. I've got like last week's uh, week before last mixed in there. So ignore that if you've sent me a mail in the last couple of weeks. Uh, let's have a look. Moon is not a lie. I seen it the other day. Says Quano Man. Uh, but you, yeah, some of those are from like the week before last, but the rest are all from like months and months ago. So it's the ones and months and months ago. So there we go. Sticker giveaway. Uh, we have him still doing that. There. there you go. Uh, right. So we've got the silver bits done. By the light of the silvery moon. Mm -mm. Okay, bonus sticker question. Here we go. Bonus sticker question. Let's do this. Where's my thing? Let's, let's do this. Bonus sticker question. I bet nobody's going to get this. But it just came into my head. Bonus sticker question. Flange. There was a TV program that some of us are old enough to remember. In its time, it was a legendary, legendary program. If you go back and watch it now, it's absolute ass. But it was a it was a, a TV program, it was an American program. It was a kind of life drama type program. And the only clue I'm gonna give you is legendary. It was kind of groundbreaking in its day. Only clue I'll give you is that at the end of the program, the, the little animation for the production company comes up, and it was a little. There was a little picture, and the song went "By the Light of the Silvery Moon," and that was it. The little thing at the end it was like for the production company. What can you? Anyone who can name that program will win that sticker. Uh, I think we're talking. I think we're talking late eighties, early nineties. It could just be early nineties. It could just be early nineties. But it's, it's kind of a groundbreaking program that's terrible now. It's like a drama type thing. Weekly drama thing. It's not a soap opera. But yeah, it's, it was terrible now if you go and watch it. Don't recommend it. <laughs> Guess the Grace Models is Button Moon. We're off to Button Moon. To visit Mr. Spoon. Button Moon. Button Moon. I'll give you another clue. I'll give you another clue. I think this might be right. I could be misleading here, but if here's here's a guitar riff. Ready? There you go. That's another clue. You won't get that. I don't think anybody will get it. Uh, right. I think it might have been late eighties, early nineties, if not all late eighties. By the light of the silvery moon. That wasn't anything to do with the theme tune. That was just like the production company at the end. After the titles are finished and you got a thing for the production company that made the program. But imagine an acoustic guitar. Diddly 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 ding. By the light of the silvery moon. Never mind. None of you are going to get it. And I think, I think it may have also had... I could be wrong here, and this really could be misleading, but I think it had the little bit... I think it was one of the production companies called Ubu, and it was like a picture of a dog, and it would really, sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog. I could be wrong on that one, so don't take that one as red. None of you will get it. I don't think any of you will. Pascal obviously has, has Googled it and got the right answer. I don't, I don't know if he's got the right answer, but he thinks, seems to think he's got the right answer. 
You're more than welcome to answer it if you want, Pascal. It's no reason not to. Right, what's next? So we've done the silvers. Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog. So we got the silvers done. Next, is Paul Dittomaster's Littlest Ever. Now remember again, the, the Sit, Ubu, Sit was the production company that comes after the titles. So it's nothing to do with the programme, it's just the company that one of the companies that made it. Right, so next we have, let me have a look at the image. It's an American series, Red Lem. It was an American series. Oops. Let me see, find the picture for reference. What's next? We've got the silver done. Okay, apparently the crest, aha, the, the Aquila on the chest needs to be silver. I shall correct that now. I did not know that. Is it supposed to be silver or white? Hmm. Because you see, if you look at this, on the on the on the standy up figure it looks silver, but on the actual uh, images on the right it looks white. I think I'll do it as white, not silver. There we go. I'll give him a white aquila, not a silver aquila. I'll just swap back to the chat so I can see it. Don't think any of you're gonna get it. Keeping in mind that the thing about moon and moonlight is not actually a clue to the title of the program. It's nothing to it's just purely the little catchphrase for the production company. Uh Thy creator is now just listing every TV thing ever. Uh, right, and Two Weeks with Love. I've never even heard of Two Weeks with Love. It wasn't a movie, it was a TV series. It ran for years. Oops. Uh, it wasn't a sitcom, Mordraka. It was a just like a drama. Drama D. It wasn't really comedy at all. It was just like a drama. Weekly thing like a sort of like i don't know like a real life slice of life type thing it's rubbish if you go back and watch it crossroads <laughs> right what we're doing we'll do um what colors next i've forgotten already hang on uh color next is let's get the red done shall we it's red dad you can wake up now so I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to give you the answer because I can't. If I leave the chat for long enough and do some painting, I'll come back and sort of answer it. I won't see it. Uh, I don't think anybody's gonna get it. Right. I shall give you. I shall give you. Ten second countdown. Ten. A countdown from ten. Ready. So it was a. 19, eight, late 80s, early 90s, uh, hour long, slice of life, uh, one word, gross models, one word, one word, slice of life type thing, and the production company at the end, and I think they said, ah, the dad's by the line of the moon, I'll give you a count of 10, ready? 10. I'll, what does it start with? It says Chris at Gross Models. T. Starts with T. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. Thunderbirds. I don't think so. 3. <laughs> 2. 1. Zero. No, I see. No. Fail. Thy creation. The Royal Family. That's a British series. Nobody got it. The answer was 30 something. Nobody remember 30 something. It's At the time it was a must watch type stuff. Nowadays, it's, you look back at it now, it's terrible. Terrible if you watch it. Don't, I don't recommend watching it. 30 something. I bet everybody's going, oh. Diddly 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 diddly. No, it's not. It was one word. 30 something. Not two words. <laughs> what? Lol. Says. <laughs> I, think, I think some of you will be far too young. David Butch, that model, says never watched it. Yeah, but you should be aware of it. Anyway, let's do some red. Dad, the painting red, Dad. Mephiston red. Meph nearly threw it then. Mephiston red time. It was a proper, like... Post yuppie but pre millennial kind of thing. It, it was just like it was like it was like Friends without being a silly comedy. 
It was more like a drama version of, think of it like Friends, but drama. But they're all like middle class suburban white people, basically. It was that kind of scenario. What it was like to be alive. And then one of them died. The characters, not the actor. And came back as a ghost and it got a bit, it got a bit rubbish there. Thy Creator says, bye, see you all next week. Thanks for coming in, Thy Creator. See you all next week. Uh, so, uh, so, sorry, see you next week, I should say. Do, 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 do. She's got the music in my head now. It was the first time I ever saw um, the guy that wrote the sound, the music for it. It was the first time I ever saw his name, and his name was W.G. Snuffy Walden. And I was like, that's kind of a dumbass name, W.G. Snuffy Walden. And he wrote the really cheesy 1980s music for it, like cheesy theme tune. He also wrote the theme for The West Wing, which is brilliant. And then I suddenly no longer thought his name was silly and instantly respected him because the West Wing has the best theme tune ever. So never mind, never mind. We'll try and maybe do a bonus question next time. I just got, where's me, I've just put my wet palette. Where's the, Fox, what are you doing? I just put paint in my wet palette, put the lid on my wet palette and put my wet palette away. Hello, my name's Fox and I'm very special. Dave uh, Butch that model says I have the countdown music in my head with you counting down. Did it did it did it do boo Right, let's get some red bits painted. Gentlemen, paint your red bits. Paying attention, Dad. It's red bit time. Now this is the wrong brush for a start. <laughs> yep. Go for a base brush. This is Mephiston Red, which Dad understands completely. It's a beautiful, beautiful colour. It's a wonderful, wonderful, nice, opaque, very opaque colour. It gives you great coverage. I still need to do two coats. I won't get away with one. Well, I might. But it's a beautiful colour. And like before, I'm not going to fuss too much about getting all the edges perfectly straight and smooth and nice. Because, again... It's going to have a shade over it, like we did with the yellow. And that shade will hide any sins where there's a slightly wobbly line, perhaps. Maybe an edge isn't quite as crisp as it should be. That shade will hide that. So that will all be gravy. And we dance by the light of the moon. Sit, Ubu, sit. Good boy. None of you know what that is. I'm also getting flashbacks to a series I remember watching, but I don't remember about it. Northern Exposure? About a doctor that goes to live in Alaska or something? Why am I remembering that? Was that another one of those like early 90s series that everybody kind of had to watch? It was the, the thing to watch. A bit like Moonlighting, which somebody mentioned. But everybody liked Moonlighting because it was kind of funny. I've got vague memories of, I think actually, I don't know why, but I think we have the soundtrack CD downstairs for the Northern Exposure, and I'd have no idea why. I don't remember anything about it, really, that much. I've got one of those reds, says Chris at Grace Models. How did you manage to get that red, says Dad? I thought I had them all. Yeah, you know, like I'm I'm known for having um hang on, what colour is his shoulder here? Are they both red? Yes. You know, like I'm I'm supposed to be like sitting on a throne of Starship Phil so that nobody can get any because I bought it all. Apparently Dad's supposed to be sitting on a throne of Mephiston Red. Now Dad, aka Scaly Models, does have a YouTube channel. However, sadly, he doesn't film stuff for it. If he did, you'd know that he paints everything red. Everything red. Everything goes red. Red is Dad's colour. So. It would be reasonable to assume that Dad owns all the red in the world. Actually, I, I like to think that if... If dad, was, if dad was like a witness to some kind of crime, 
Uh, and by dad, I mean Mike Mountain. Obviously, my dad. If dad was witness to a crime, he'd be a terrible witness. Can you describe the colour of the getaway car? Uh, no. Why not? I don't know. It wasn't red. <laughs> what colour was it? it was not red. But what colour? Not red. <laughs> Bless him. He does like his red. Right, so we've got the knees. Uh, we have the elbows. Elbows. Spanish archer. Elbow. <laughs> Get it? El Spanish. Never mind, moving on. Now, you see how I'm using a, a larger than normal brush? I'm using a base brush here. It is tempting when you're painting stuff, brush painting, to to look at an area you need to paint and think something like this, I need to use a small brush. But more often than not, that's the worst thing you can do. The trick with any kind of miniature painting or brush painting in general is as and where possible, Try and use the biggest brush you can. Now there's a bit of weird armour here because the armour just kind of stops. This little raised bit of elbow armour just kind of stops and fades out. So I've got to kind of guess where the edge is. Um, yeah, you, you kind of want to, rather than looking at an area and thinking that's a small thing I need to paint, I need to use a small brush. You need to get into the habit of using <clears throat> the biggest brush you feasibly can on whatever it is you need to paint. Like I'm using this, this base brush, a medium base brush on this little detail here. I don't need to be neat because I want to paint that black anyway, but you know, I'm not using a little tiny detail brush, anything like that. And the reason you want to get into that habit, it takes a bit of practice because you need to build up the confidence to go into a tiny area with a big brush. Now, sometimes you need to use a little brush, but you'll learn slowly and gradually with experience when you can use a little brush and when you don't need to because what you want to do is always be using the biggest possible brush you can feasibly use in any given situation because it reduces the risk of brush strokes like here i don't know if you can see this i paint this bit here get the brush flat one stroke done that's one brush stroke. A little tiny brush will be stroke, 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 stroke. You'd have all kind of stroke brush strokes. And even thinning your paint, you're risking adding lots of unnecessary brush strokes. I know you can't see this bit because I'm going underneath, but you want to always minimize the amount of work you'd need the brush to do. Another trick to go hand in hand with that is not to get stabity with the brush. Don't assume that you need to be doing this with the brush all the time because you need to you need to learn or teach yourself how to use the way the brush works. What I mean by that is you're not always just using the whole tip of the brush. Sometimes you're using the whole flat side or the edge or whatever. You want to get used to pushing a brush down and using its width as an advantage. And over time, you'll gradually get an instinct for it. You'll stop thinking about it. You'll just start doing it. So what you'll do is, uh, I've got something I can demonstrate on. For example, I don't really want to use that. If I want to paint on here, if I wanted to paint a straight line, a thick line, I've got two options. I could paint a line like that and then build it out and try and make it thick. But then the edges like that or what i can do is i can get the brush i can push it flat and drag it down now it doesn't really work on here because the plastic isn't taking the paint very well but if you do that you won't get a perfect straight line especially if you're not doing clear plastic but you're more likely to get a better straight line that requires less cleanup because you're using the width of the bigger, using the width of the brush. You're not doing this. And that's the trick you, you want to learn when you're brush painting. <clears throat> if you've got an edge, so you're painting towards, there's this little, say, say you've got something, there's a step here like that. And you want to get the brush. If I'm trying to paint up to this edge like this, I'm going to get 
an uneven line. If I get the brush and squish it flat like that and drag it along, it's going to be a nice smooth straight line. So especially painting up against an edge like, let's say you've got an edge like that. If I put the brush like this and I'm trying to, you can't, if you just get the brush flat, squash it flat. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to it, but combining, using a bigger brush than you think, and using the squishability of a brush to your advantage really will improve your skills because not only will you get more confident with the brush which is, is vital anyway not only will you get more confidence you'll also start to see better results because you're painting faster as you're painting faster, you're getting results faster and you're getting more, you're getting like, wow, look at that, I did that and it took me five minutes. You're getting more confident. And as well, you're getting less and less brush strokey paint. So it means that to get good coverage, you may only have to do two coats because the first coat, you're using a bigger brush and you were able to get the paint covering most of the thing you're painting and the second coat just filled in the gaps. If you use a small brush, you'll have the risk of gaps between the brush strokes and then you've got a third coat to go and fix all those that you didn't see the first time. So how does that knee cap work? Okay. I've got to do some touching in here because there's a there's a the knee cap bit, there's a little flange at the top of the knee kneecap that kind of just disappeared into a shapeless bit and I've painted it red. I didn't want to do that. Never mind. Now you will still see me do the stabity stabity painting sometimes because there's no option. But where you can avoid it, it's much better. The other thing as well is if you're painting a circle, again, I'll try it on here, but it's not gonna be brilliant. You're painting a circular shape or painting around a curved edge. Let's say you've got something that's like got a curved edge, like the kneecaps on here. There's a curved uh, edge at the top. If you try and do it with a stability painting, it'll be messy. But if you get the brush, brush flat, you can paint round curves. Well, not like that. You can paint round curves much more smoothly because you're using this the, the squish down brush it's hard to explain but if you squish the brush down you're getting a nice square chisely edge but you're not having to use a brush that's that shape i know what i mean so don't think if you've just picked up a brush recently if you just started brush painting and you're thinking oh, i'm not very good at this <clears throat> my paint looks terrible it's all lumpy and bit don't don't lose hope it's not just as straightforward as picking up a brush and slapping paint on it's not as simple as that but it's not that much more complex it's just learning how to use the brush okay so that's one knee capped on need touching there's a little bit there i need to touch him with the yellow because it went a bit wonky wonky donkey uh, we have these little bits on the on the feet i'm still using this medium base brush not going bigger, not going smaller than that. So you demonstrate the circular bit. So we can just get the brush flat. So if I get the brush flat, squish it down a bit, it doesn't go over the edge. It just conforms to the edge of that circle. There we go. Now I can go around the edge. Now I can use the tip of the brush here because it's a very fine edge. So a good brush good brushmanship means you can use all different parts of the brush i'm not the best painter in the world i never say i am but I, I know simple basic things like you don't just use the tip of the brush there's different parts of the brush and different ways to use it and that's why i like these these base brushes the ones that like that that shape sort of rounded edge shape because they're kind of flexible you can you can use the tip of it you can use the sides if you splay them out and flatten them down they do go into like a square chisel shape which is great uh, i'm not going to worry too much about going underneath there because that is going to get weathered and covered in mud but i'll do my best to get some on there so there we go again i've not gone right to the edge of that little re uh, re raised bit there but again what I can do is push down the brush a little bit and just move it round the edge 
it's almost like if you want to get to let's say there was this edge was quite pronounced here and I wanted to paint this bit one color and this but let's say this stuck up like a centimeter if I hold the brush down and keep it at the same height and the same pressure that edge is never going to move and I can easily go do 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 like that if I'm doing it like this it's, it's going to be different you're going to make a mess so try and get into that it's, it's kind of hard to explain and put into words it's more of an instinctive thing but once you've once you've tried it and got used to it and that's one of the reasons why I love uh, I'm going to, have to take this off aren't I that's one of the reasons why I love the Warhammer kits so much the Games Workshop kits because they are so over like exaggerated with the, the recesses and the, the raised bits because those are so exaggerated it does make painting them a hell of a lot easier they're kind of designed I mean no, this isn't a this is a Funko Pop so it doesn't really apply but it's the same principle because all the raised areas are so extremely over the top raised exaggerated it makes painting them a joy they're kind of designed to be painted with a brush and it makes if you want to learn how to brush paint and how to how to control a brush learn on games workshop kits get yourself a vehicle or whatever because they're sculpted in such a way to be nice have nice relief on the edges so that you can learn to control the brush like if you tried if you if you're painting say you're brush painting if you think i'm going to learn how to brush paint and i've got a load of tamir you know british army officers or something or whatever 135th officers it's fine they're nice sculpts whatever they are but they won't be as exaggerated they're not a good test a learning ground for this kind of thing if you want to learn put some training wheels on and paint some warhammer stuff just because the edges are crisp the the panel lines are deep the raised detail is massively raised it gives you a good good place to just learn the craft because it's kind of designed it's just designed to be brush painting friendly you can't really go wrong and at the end of the day you're still you're painting warhammer so you, you'll get addicted regardless but they are here is a great place to learn brush painting that's what that's how i've done it i've only been doing people don't realize this but i've only been doing brush painting for a couple of years so i've gone a bit wrong there there is some soft detail there so i didn't know where that bit stopped so i'll have to go and touch that in later that's fine if i can get the brush down there Meh. Meh. can't quite get the brush down the back of his i'm getting a, i'm getting a pikachu vibe from this guy it's, it's gone a bit wrong unless that's why they're angry because they look like pikachu <laughs> pika pika right there you but i've only been doing brush painting for a couple of years now i can't quite get around the back of his leg to paint the other the top edge of that i'm gonna try and angle the brush around a bit and do my best so i might be better going in with a smaller brush just to try and get there's a little there's a little sort of the top edge of his circular but on the inside of his leg there is i just can't quite get to it do that later off camera where i can fiddle around <laughs> i would never thought i'd hit here uh, i never thought i would hear fox say painting faster i'm going for a lie down says david butcher that model yeah some some things are never meant to be heard uh we've got any red on the only thing is that picture i've got is it doesn't show his backpack so i've got to kind of guess now um so we've got the shoulder pauldrons but we've got the side of the head to do we've got that bit oh we've got the cuffs to don't we uh, now for these cuffs mm, might get away with this brush just i'm not thinking of a smaller brush because it's a smaller area I'm thinking of a smaller brush because it's a tight little area where I can't quite get the brush in. But we'll see. Again, the moulding just kind of stops and fades away, so I don't really know where to take that. We'll get the rest of it painted, and then we'll see what happens. So I look on the little, you won't see here, but there's like an edge to this cuff. Instead of trying to paint it like this, I'm getting the brush on the corner, and I'm squishing it flat and splaying it out 
so I can just move that brush along and it gives me a nice crisp edge. Instead of trying to paint that little lip, just get the brush on the corner of the, instead of trying to paint this bit here, get it on the corner and splay the brush out. So it does that and then you can drag the brush along. Just little handy ways. Same on this one. Don't try and paint the edge. Splay the brush and catch it. You still make mistakes. Just look at wobbly edges here and there. It's not any way perfect. But it just means you'll have a, a bit easier time. You'll use, use less paint. You'll have to reload your brush less often. And you'll get a smoother finish if you're lucky. Okay, that's one cuff. Like I said, the moulding here is a bit rubbish because it does fade away. It just disappears, that cuff just disappears. I don't really know what to, where to send it. Like where do I paint red and where do I not paint red? It just kind of stops. Simon, you had the right idea trying to take the arms off. It would make life a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. I've got to go under there now and paint this bit. Underneath, I may have to go for a smally smally brush for that bit. In which case I'll do that off camera because that'll be me looking really close with my headset of seeing. Yeah, mm, yeah, I'll get a small brush in there later on. So we'll do this, we'll do this cuff. Uh, and then it's almost finished in time then. So we'll do this cuff and then we'll call it quits, I think, for this week. I might get the rest of the red done before next week's show. We'll see. Because there's still loads to do. I've got tons to do yet. Let's get this done. It's off camera, I do apologise. So yeah, it's just brush painting is excellently good fun. If up until now you've never really done brush painting, because I, I, for many years I didn't, until a couple of years ago, purely because I, I was trying to brush paint with Tamiya paints. I didn't know better. And I was having a devil of a time because Tamiya paints are terrible for brush painting. So everything came out like ass, and I thought I couldn't brush paint. But it's like trying to airbrush with a bad airbrush. You think you can't airbrush, but it's not. It's just that the airbrush is terrible. If you try and brush paint with Tamiya paints... It can be done, don't get me wrong, it can be done. And you can get good results, but you have to know exactly what you're doing. And it's not as easy as just mixing up, as just getting some acrylic paints and painting. There's a lot of faff. It's like airbrushing, it can be done. If you've got a nice airbrush, it can be really easy. But you need a nice airbrush. You can't just use some crappy old Chinese knockoff necessarily. So... If you've ever tried brush painting and never been any good at it, or not thought you were any good at it, or if you've, you know, you never tried it, make life easy for yourself. Learn on something that's designed for brush painting specifically. So go and get yourself a just a pack of Space Marines or a, a, a cheap little vehicle kit like a Land Speeder or something like that. Just a simple little kit, like the the Space Marine Land Speeder. It's cost you like 15 or 16 quid or something it's a vehicle it's also got like six dudes in it so you've got tons of potential painting practice there tons of things to practice on it'd be great fun won't cost you a lot and it's just designed to be brush painted right so i think that's going to do us for the time being i've got still got those left to do i've got to paint the, the gun casing red uh i don't think i'll do anything red on the backpack i've got the sides of the head to do I think we'll leave it there because I need a great big Wii for a start and it's also 10 to 5 so it's nearly nearly home time also keep in mind when you use red paint or yellow paint bright yellow paint it's gonna take me ages to clean that out make sure you clean your brush thoroughly because red paint is a bugger it will stay in a brush forever uh, now yes and don't forget as Dave rightly points out that I totally forgot to mention just then uh, yes so if you want to get if you want to if you want to get into brush painting you never have the Land Speeder Storm, brilliant kit. I'll, I'll show you mine. You've all seen it, but I'll show you mine anyway. Uh, it is here. Assuming it doesn't fall off the stand. Break. 
It's got a layer of dust, but the dust doesn't come. You have to buy the dust separately. It's a brilliant little kit. It's got like six dudes in it. Can I move that? Hold that any better so you can see it. It's got like six dudes in it, so you can get a great figure paint. This is the first, the first proper uh, Warhammer thing I painted properly. Six dudes in it, so it's great fun for practice for figure painting. It's a nice square little vehicle, so you have a great time getting all the textures and weathering and whatever you want to do. I hadn't learned all my techniques at this point, so I was still figuring things out. Uh, it's only like 16 to 17 quid and don't forget like i said this channel is supported by goblin gaming so if you want to get yourself this which is normally about 15 to 16 quid maybe a bit more but you want to save even more you want to pay even less go to goblingaming.co.uk there's a link in the description below this video just just down there go and have a look at the link down here somewhere in the description use that link that's my goblin gaming affiliate link use that link not only will you save up to 20 percent off games workshop all games workshop products are 20 percent off recommended retail price uh, you'll say 20% off Games Workshop, also off uh, Conflict 47, also off uh, Malifaux, and massive savings on everything else. And it's not just Games Workshop, it's loads of stuff. Tabletop gaming, card games, card trading games, uh, Pokemon card games, all that kind of stuff. Magic the Gathering, loads of stuff. They've got loads of stuff. Go and check them out. 20% oh, off RRP for those three off all games workshops you want to if you want to learn how to brush paint go and get yourself some cheapest chips games workshop 20 percent off at goblin link in the description below the video and get painting get all your bits from there get painting have some fun if you want to learn how to paint i can't recommend gw stuff enough it's just so beautifully crisp all the panel lines are massively deep all the edges are crisp as hell all the figures like the faces on the figure these are the first proper figures i've ever painted properly they all look the same but all the faces are like sculpted as hell so you can have great fun you can learn how to do the highlights because the shape of the plastic just tells your brush what to do you get the paint on your brush and the, the surface just tells your brush where to go and the paint just does what you want so you'll have a great time but yeah goblin gaming link in the description below the video save 20 percent off on that get yourself painting uh now let's have a look quick look at chat and then we'll call it for a show because i'm dying for a great big wee uh thanks fox for the tip trip down memory lane what was i talking about i've forgotten now oh yeah for um 30 something that was another my friend watch man he watched some utter crap says spid at least it was better than doogie hauser says more dracker it says Dougie Houston. I think you mean Dougie Hauser. Greatest American hero. Look here what's happening to me. I can't believe it myself. Suddenly I'm a part. I can't, I can't sing any more than that. I'll get copyright pulled. But I know that theme tune. It's a brilliant theme tune. It's a great series. They just didn't last very long. Greatest American hero is actually really good. Um, Fox, didn't you spend the last two streams painting those pauldrons yellow? No, what I did was... I painted everything the yellow first because I knew I needed to do all the dry brushing to get the yellow highlights, the highlights on the yellow armor. So rather than paint all the yellow, then paint these red bits and then dry brush all the yellow and then have to go and paint the red bits again because I've dry brushed all yellow all over the red. It's better just to go. If you're doing the dry brushing post shading technique, you kind of have to pick a color that's your majority base color. Do that dry brush the highlights on the shades and the highlights dry brush all that and then go and do everything else and i'm gonna to have to do the same thing with the reds but i'll just have to be careful and not get on the yellows but for the yellows because it's the majority color i can easily just get it all done and then paint everything else on the top so go for the color that's most prevalent and do all your messy dry brushing so you're not having to be careful around the edges of all the other colors now i do need to do a second coat of that red that's only one coat and i've got to paint that and i've got to do the other bits on the helmet so there's loads more red to do i've got to do a second coat i'll probably get that done finished off camera later today and um, when we come back next week we'll crack on with the next more red stuff and bits and bobs uh let's have a look what are you talking about willis <laughs> dad says brush strokes what are you talking about willis different that was different strokes <laughs> i get it though i like it i like it a lot Push it flat, says George. Push it flat. Slap it on and push it flat. Um, can someone help? I need help on what shade to use on my Saurus Sunblood. It has Celestra Grey Skin, Rakarth Dry Brush, then Mechanical Grey Scales with an Orange Dry Brush. Uh, would a photo in the Boom Hut help? Yes, it would. Stick a photo in the Boom Hut so we can see the colours. Uh, now they're all suggesting, so I won't get in that because I've not seen the picture. Fox, has he been standing and chewing gum? What with a little gunk on his feet? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, George says, thanks all for coming in. Time to head to Games Workshop. Have I just given you the itch there? I mean, not that I, not that you didn't have the itch anyway, because you're just a monster when it comes to the Games Workshop stuff. But uh, yes, did I give you the itch? <laughs> Fox, message in Facebook chat for you after your Wii, says Chris. Have a good couple of hours, everyone. Yep, don't forget, that's going to do us for today here. So thank you to everyone that's been watching. You're all lovely, and I love you all to bits, absolutely. Um, but don't forget, of course, now this is finished, I'll be back next Sunday with more Warhammer uh, Sunday. During the week, hopefully, if I get everything filmed and enough done, I'll be able to put up another episode of the Sazabi, Master Grade Sazabi build. It is a Patreon-exclusive series, so if you want to see it, and the reason there's not been much content on my normal YouTube channel, I'm filming that. If you want to see it, you need to be a $10 plus patron. So go to my my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash model making guru uh, and become a patron, become a supporter. It keeps me going. It keeps the channel going. It's what I do for a living. I depend on my patrons to keep the lights on and keep me in food and rent and rates. So I do appreciate all the support my patrons give me. They're all awesome. So do have a think about that if you want to go and watch that. Uh, but don't forget, of course, tonight at 8 o'clock tonight, 8 p.m. BST uh, is Chris's Warhamster Sunday. He does his little bit of bit of Warhammering and he's working on his big shouty space horse, his dragon with a lady dragon, his lady with the silly pointless like non-functional armor on, but she looks quite good. Even though she's got silly pointless chest armor that wouldn't actually... I'll just say tit window and leave it at that. I think from what I can see on the screen. Anyway, it looks really good though. So he's working on his shouty space horse. So go uh, join in. I'll try and join in the chat if I'm not in the middle of my dinner. So I shall see you then in the chat for that. That's 8pm tonight on Chris's channel. Gross model. He's there in the chat. Gross models. Just you know, go to channel. That's going to do us. So I'll get the red finished off. Uh, and then next week we'll carry on. But until next time, just remains for me to say thank you very much. Don't forget uh, to uh, have a look at gross, uh, no, gross models. Have a look at Goblin Gaming link down below and have a look at the GoFundMe for Simon and Gundam UK. Every little helpful little uh, donation is greatly appreciated. Helps him keep him and his family going for the next few months. So Simon, I know you're not watching this, but if by any, for any reason you are, take care of yourself and hopefully get better soon. For everybody else, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome like some of these. Go be awesome. You there, you there with the eyes and the talking and the listening. And until next Next time I will say, and hopefully I won't screw up this time, uh, until next time I will say, adios amoebas. Bye. Oh, I did it again. I don't know. Oh, I pressed the, oh, I pressed the one for the titles and it just decided to start the countdown. No, I just, oh. Ooh.